प्लीज स्टार्ट इंट्रोडक्शन हेलो एंड गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल आई एम शुभांगी दास फ्रॉम अकाउंटिंग एंड फाइनेंस डिपार्टमेंट इट गिव्स मी इमेंस प्लेजर टू वेलकम यू ऑल टू द डे टू ऑफ तर्कश रोड टू सक्सेस आफ्टर अ वेरी एनलाइटनिंग फर्स्ट डे ऑफ दिस वर्कशॉप वी आर बिगिनिंग द सेकेंड डे विद अ गोल टू मैप आउट आर करियर प्लान डिटरमाइन द हायर एजुकेशनल कोर्सेज वी शुड कंसिडर एंड टू डेवलप the necessary job skills that employers look for so in order to guide us we are honored to have with us mrs bhuma govindan i would like to introduce her before you she is a career counselor as well a wellness coach she started her career as an engineer in delhi later she pursued her further studies in career counseling with uni variety which is in partnership with UCLA and today she is here with us to speak on the topic life after 3 years we would forward this session and i would request mrs bhuma govindan ma'am to take over yes ma'am thank you uh, sorry your name shubhangi ma'am ah shubhangi thank you shubhangi for giving me a very nice introduction about me yeah see as she said i am bhuma basically from chennai uh, and i am like she is told everything uh, now uh, what i am personally i want to tell you all is i am not going you people to tell about like you know what is after bcom what is after ba like accountancy what you are going to do i'm just going to prepare you all in, in like how you should face your life after graduation because if you type on the internet itself like uh, you know you can get a variety of jobs what you can get it but personally what i want to tell you people all is other than beyond the education you have something in life which you really have to focus on okay mm, uh, wait i'll just share my screen one sec seconds yes if i just type the share button normally share is right one second just give me two screen is shared shared share ah now no uh, you are not this my present ah uh, no everybody can see my presentation now no ma'am Okay, wait. Now, no, no ma'am. Wait, wait, wait. Just give me a sec. Now, now. Ah, at the beginning. No, no. ma'am. No, no, ma'am. Exactly. Just to, uh, at the very beginning, na your screen was shared. Okay. Uh, so just click on that share button next to that mute share content. Ah, me now. Ma'am, your camera is on your. Only I can see. You are seeing me only. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Just give me a sec. I am new to this Microsoft team. Wait. I will learn it, but just give me. Uh, I am searching. Where is it? Microsoft team. Okay. Just. I'll put this down. Mm. One minute. Ah, uh. sorry, guys. One second. I'll try to find out. Ah, uh, Microsoft Team. I'll go to my mail itself and see. Can you? You can see me, is it? You all can see yes, me. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, ma'am. One second. Ma Ah, in your then. Microsoft Teams, na madam. In your yeah. Microsoft Teams app, that is open. There you can see buttons like mute, video. Yeah, I can see, but that I'm just checking out that Microsoft Team itself now where it is gone. I was like, can you guys? Ah, uh, just press 
called tab none you will see what and all are the applications that are open in your uh, system right now yeah. alt and tab just keep pressing alt and tab you will be able to see the macbook is. just check it's a macbook it's a macbook yeah yeah okay that is a issue uh, yeah okay, one second okay. macbook we don't know no 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 wait 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 one second you just give give me no worries the macbook you can share it whatever no i can share it i was sharing it before actually before right. i start this program no no wait give me a sec guys yeah now i can do it wait yeah yeah got it one second i want to uh first uh, namaskar masjid padvidar honarya mitra mitrinino okay welcome guys <clears throat> now actually i'm going to tell you graduation is not the end it's a beginning guys can you able to see my screen now yes ma'am it's visible yes ma'am okay uh, i just put it in full screen mode okay <clears throat> ah as i said in the slide nam graduation is not the end it's the beginning i'm going to talk about life after graduation the real world is the ultimate classroom we all people think that everything is only in the classroom but as as i want you people all to know that the real world is the classroom itself so initial stages i want to hear discuss about the initial stages normally it won't happen like you know once you are out of graduation you are like you know you can get job easily or whatever it is i am not uh, afraid i mean making making you scared or whatever i am not panicking you i am just trying to tell uh, initial stages of graduation actually right after stepping out of college into the real world it can be quite overwhelming like uh, due to the you won't have you won't be having uh, classroom structures no exams no test but what actually you will feel like you will have a plenty of time uh you have like you 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 won't find time to meet your friends you will be find writing applications and you know and you will be filled with fears and so many negative thoughts this can cause you to us like you know you will end up in many negative thoughts but reality and rejection this all you all should have to know exactly after graduation it is not that much easy but at the same time it is not difficult also the first few months are spent in a mode called survival mode because as everyone scramble like they will be like you know going here and there to find work but no one prepares you for the reality of rejection which actually stinks because in 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 normal classroom or normal school life skills are not being taught so finding a job is even difficult at that time you may feel even writing a covering letter is a big hard task okay so next slide wait uh you feel like you are a failure you may be comparing yourself with your friend who think has got the perfect job in perfect company in the perfect city but that doesn't matter which may really you know it's like you may attending interviews and interviews you will be struggling but that's not the real case here i am going to give you a real solution after graduation what everyone should do now i really appreciate youngsters are really very super smart because the you you have to i what i find in this slide is find your passion for example if you are really strength good in some uh, subject or something you have a real skills i want you to proceed your career in that passion it may sound late but it's better late than never but passion is extremely important to lead a successful life so what i personally feel also in my life also i finished my engineering i have little technical skills but my if you ask me what is my strength is my strength is communication i love to be with people that's why i selected this job as a career counselor and i am also a wellness coach later i will tell you my part of wellness coach finding job in which you are comfortable always you have to find a job in which field you are comfortable and makes i want you to makes you to get up in the morning like why i am telling you this comfortable means when you want to go for the job you have to get up in the morning with full energy like this today is my day i am going to do it do things that makes your life really worth living 
so if you select in that way your life will be you know uh, easy um, so i as i said it's like you know always the achievers real achievers or real success people they always le learn in their whole life so being a be a lifelong learner always remember this point triple l lifelong learner so you are learning to live as an adult because though you are an adult when you are finish your graduation here you are going to learn as live like real adult for me which means you are going to manage your finance you are going to manage your uh, uh, income i mean that income you are going to manage all this you should learn it's great it is really actually great but it's a difficult transition but it's important to accept it and transform into the learn you have to accept that now we have to be a real adult and we have to start looking for uh, like you know the next level of uh, career uh, proceedings so for that what i want to always say is first you will be like you know stumble like you know oh, where we are what we are going to do but with every step you will always find yourself getting closer and closer where you are supposed to be if you select you are a uh, career passion as your career you will be love to work and you will every day you will have an energy to work and you will like if you even take i always say success never comes in uh, big steps success always comes in small steps so every day you just uh, proceed your step one step for your goal one step for your goal every day if you do like that you schedule it and you start working on it each part of your journey is very important because each adventure teaches you a valuable lesson but most importantly originally no one tells you because at the back of since you are an adult everybody will think like you are a big person and nobody will pat you on the shoulder that it's going to be better it's going to be better but always look at the mirror and you have to tell for yourself like that it's going to be better it's going to be better we are going to prove it so at the finally what i want to tell you is it is important to know that life is not a staircase or ladder or a series of perfectly synchronized steps but winding it's, it is a winding road with branches and forks and dead ends so i am not scaring you guys i am just telling you like what i really experience what everyone experience now sitting in the like our uh, chamber or like whatever the room so it's like our our own experience we just want to tell you all okay next for this for to proceed your graduate after graduation life the first thing you first and best thing and the important thing you need is attitude and mindset here i want you to put to live very clearly the difference between attitude and mindset guys you should have really a very good positive attitude i'll tell you first mindset because it both are interconnected mindset means you always see how you see the world around you an attitude means how you interact with the world according to your mindset so always you have to keep your mindset very strong uh, for example there are people what i say is you always have to be associate with people who are positive thoughts in mindset also you have two types of mindset which is like you know fixed mindset and growth mindset fixed mindset means they believe that they have a, like you know certain talents and intelligence and abilities but they limit themselves they won't proceed further means they can't accept failures for example they set goals in their lower end and they'll work for that goals whereas always the welcoming one is the growth mindset people will have normally if you see fixed mindset will be 20% of the people they are ambitious but their ambition is very limited whereas growth mindset people like like the normal people 80% of the people in our population or growth mindset because you believe that anything is possible this human tendency always think everything is possible you believe and you start with a set of talents and abilities which you already have and you have that capability will make you to move to next level for example this growth mindset people always experiment on new things to learn new things okay they are all really good learners okay i want you all to set a realistic goals why i mean to say here is realistic goals means which can be achievable always you have to set a goal which can be achievable you can't set a goal like i will go to jupiter i will go to mars always set a goal which can be you know, i am not asking you to limit yourself but at the same time 
always ambition is great even if you do small small things you appreciate yourself you stand on the mirror today we did a good job like that you always appreciate yourself and you just move on you may sometimes you may get failure that doesn't matter from failure only we will actually learn by making mistakes only you will learn this you will be like this i am just telling you guys this is very important the seven thoughts you need for a growth mindset this oh, why i am more on this attitude and mindset means this is only very important real value of humans to go to their next level to achieve anything i can even talk for bma you will get this for bsc you will get this for bcom you will get this but what i this all whatever the extra possibilities of your career is already available on the internet i want to cover whichever is not on the internet whichever is not told by uh, the people which you meet very often so i'm trying to put these potentials on you to bring out the best from you okay seven thoughts for growth mindset you all people should definitely know this girls because guys are you you have you should, what are you saying always you have to ask yourself if somebody is asking what are you saying you are not you should not be like you know in associate with the people who always complain and you always see problem like you know oh this has happened to me because i i i am not good at it this has happened to me because god doesn't show me any favor so you should not associate with those kind of people you should always associate with people who always say see problem as challenges for example this only you know i can do it at least we will try it you have to always associate with those kind of people in life that is very helpful for you to have a growth mindset and why we are getting negative thoughts it's really really very common we'll get negative thoughts because and there is a saying when you are not think don't think about the monkey means we always think about the monkey that's a human tendency so we should of everybody will get a bad thoughts but we have to figure it out why we are getting this negative thought if you know the answer for why then you can turn the starting point around and you can make it positive definitely you guys can do it i i have 100% confidence on you guys then next thing is in out of the seven thought this is a third thought which you really want who do you want to be always ask yourself you no know, this and all it looks like you know very weird when i am talking because you may not be like you know thinking of all this like whether buma is going to talk this or buma is going to talk about that bba or bma i am not i don't know i want this has to reach all students or all graduates who do you want to be always ask in front of the mirror while you get up in the morning when you are brushing your teeth ask yourself in the mirror who you want to be ask yourself ask yourself and you also think if i be like this think the future i am not telling be in the present but imagine yourself in the future like which makes you happy that really going to make you to go to next step next always do you have a supportive people in your life always associate with uh people with positive thoughts and who really cares about you and uh, like who, i'm not telling you to move you should not move with bad guys you can but you know you try to develop uh, limits with them and don't hate anyone don't develop enemies that's very important in life just be friend with everyone you know as by being like now you are all 20 or 21 so at this age you know where to limit where to extend so you try to follow that and definitely don't mix with people who makes drama actually drama means they always want only attention and they are all like you know drama queen uh, they say uh, like people like show off i am not telling you should not show off you should show off only where you the, there is a different place where you have to show off if for example celebrities they always have to show off because that is their field so you just avoid these drama people in your life and what are you capable of everybody is capable of anything like that to dream and dream big determine if if it is i this is a very strong thing i want to say if something is possible for someone then why you can't be in that one you ask yourself if uh, ambani if the person by mukesh ambani can be like ambani then why we can't we always i am not telling everybody can be mukesh ambani but what i am trying to say is everybody has got that potential we have to try to bring it out from us that is very important and finally gratitude which is very important in life 
you always think why should we say thank thanks to our parents definitely we should thank them uh, appreciate what you have learned because you came all the way from till now is because of your parents but i always say for parents also uh, kids are born it's uh, we, we should think i won't say we should i won't say parenting is a duty parenting is a uh, what everybody should know i won't say it's like a duty that every parent should do parenting is like something beyond duty it's our it's like it's our uh, lifestyle you can say so appreciate what you have learned and how far you have come from write it every day this is really very helpful to maintain gratitude on you gratitude means like write a journal or planner every day to be specific which helps you to develop positive thinking and motivation for example uh, if you keep this in this in this gratitude itself i want to be gratitude for my husband like who gave me this opportunity to talk in front of you through his friend mr suresh okay so i am very gratitude i am very thankful to mr suresh and my husband and i also want to thank my daughter really who helps me in making this presentation being a like you know 2006 born they are very very talented every child is talented i every person is talented only thing is you have to try to bring it out um then next i am going to deal only with these three things uh, guys one is life after graduation that is not the normal one which i want to tell i want to be like you know be uh, uh, be accept failure and try to keep moving on and uh, go for it that you can do it and make your uh, passion as your career which is really lovable you can completely live happily ultimate happiness if you develop uh, passion as your career for example now, now also it's not late i am not diverting you you somebody would have think we bought booma for like you know life after graduation booma is diverting students no not at all it's never never late it's never late than never a uh, better late than never sorry so always think which is what in which we are good at try to proceed definitely you will succeed for every succeed or uh, for every success person if you see them see for example mukesh ambani i'm just taking mukesh ambani since like you know he is a real rich person wealthy person there is a difference between rich and wealthy person rich person doesn't have time whereas wealthy person have more time this is a difference rich person always after money wealthy person is not after money money comes to him by his work ambani doesn't need to work now but why he is working because he he asked that even if you take all the money from ambani ambani will work ambani will get that money again in in 5 years i can tell because he has that attitude and mindset and definitely this he has got from his genetic pattern because he has been exposed to business life but i am not telling everybody can become an entrepreneur guys i can tell you that because in every one's mind there is an entrepreneur skill is there because why i am telling you in our childhood are we not asking our mom to get this get that and we are, are not a very strong to get that every child has got that ability to become an entrepreneur that is my personal opinion which i want to share with you all see you don't end up your life only with that uh, 9 to 6 jobs <clears throat> you try to see beyond that so for that for to become an entrepreneur exactly what you need is you have you have to be a lifelong learner and you have to be productive productive means i am not telling all the day you have to be productive you can definitely have some time for fun and exercise or whatever it is productive means every day you have to set your calendar like 3 or 4 hours i am going to be productive i am going to bring out something from me like that if you start working it anybody can become an entrepreneur so the it's an entrepreneur definitely to become an entrepreneur you need two things very important time and money time means you have to really work hard to become an entrepreneur and money you have to invest without investing you can't get uh, the big money okay always you have to start working for small things slowly you have to expand your things for that main very important thing guys for entrepreneur you have to set your goal can i ask something people like uh, what is the difference between goal and dream can anyone tell like what is the difference between goal and a dream i want you guys you people can chat hello yes ma'am ma'am uh, i was like shocked whether you people are listening or not <laughs> ah, tell me can anyone say what is the difference between goal and a dream
ma'am their mics are muted they will be uh, writing oh. their chats oh okay 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 sorry for that just one or two people if they on, on the chat is fine i like interactive presentation actually because college people are very well disciplined right only school people you have to close the mic chat or mic order it is ma'am yeah goal is the starting point and okay uh, no dream is the starting point a point and goal is the end point okay that's really good answer but let me put me very specific dream is something uh what you want what you want means exactly what you want you want to become a, a financier you want to become an uh, it people it guy or you want to become an entrepreneur that's a dream goal is when you want goal always related to time for example you always set your goal there are three different types of goals uh, students like one is a short term goal mid term goal long term goal always you have to work on your goals then this is very important to become an entrepreneur and for anything in life you need a goal without goal uh, i will say like you know you can't be like you know successful in your career so for example if you are in this position you have to write how you have to write your goals means always you have to write 10 goals and you have to stick it somewhere in your room in your cupboard in your closet or you somewhere you stick it whenever in which place you you see very often like that you have to stick it and you have to tell exactly 10 goals you have to write all goals should be related to time for example today is may 19th uh, 2021 by next may 2022 you have to think that i am going to become an um, uh, small level entrepreneur or i am going to become an um senior accountant or i'm going to become a he uh, like whatever uh, whatever you feel in the field you want to be always you have to set goals so like that you have to write 10 goals that 10 goals should be uh, like you know which is really achievable realistic goals not like you know big big goals you can't write always you can achieve only by achieving by taking small steps you keep that in mind always so write 10 goals and keep it for example i what i read, i for example i will write means uh, i want to go to my next level in my career counselor before 19th may 2022 i will imagine myself if i even if you want money how you have to write means i am going to earn 2 lakhs per month uh, before september 2024 like that you have to specific goal means goal should be specific whereas dream it's not necessary to be specific okay i think i am clear in uh, differentiating between goals and uh, dreams okay next uh, for entrepreneur to become an entrepreneur you need seven skills for example ambition and perseverance i'll tell you ambition everybody should have an ambition to work to move on it is easy to give up uh, when you normally people will give up means in tough times but the entrepreneur means they will never give up even in tough times they will try to work it on they will try to see the possibilities for example i'll tell you one very important thing for to become an entrepreneur it will work for anyone he, I, uh, have you ever heard of this robert kiyosaki he is a very big uh, uh, very successful guy actually he was telling e plus r is equal to uh, o which is event e is event r is response and o is output see i'll i'll take this pandemic situation corona corona is an event okay event is going to be same for everyone but how you are responding to that event matters for example um, i'll see for corona if you really scared about corona definitely at one point of time uh, when you move with people you will get corona and that will worse you that will worse you and you will may need even oxygen whereas the person who is very aware of corona and he is taking some safety measures and he is even if he is getting corona he is telling that i am going to be fine it's not nothing is going to happen i am going to be strong and going to come back if you think like that how you respond to that event matters so and your output completely depends on your response so that is why always we say for anything happens to you you always tell i am responsible because even if you are fighting with in general if you are fighting with someone or if you are like you know if you are facing some failure 
first you have to think tell yourself that i am responsible for this because why i am telling you this then only you will be in your position you will try to find analyze why it has happened to me why this failure has happened to me you write it in a notebook guys because that is really helpful you have to write so today i face a failure you write why i face failure am i not no sound in my technical or am i not uh, do my things in perfect timings or, or am i not hit the target like that you write you analyze yourself and if you write even for any field not only for entrepreneur if any field if you write this in every day you make this as an habit to go to next level you always write in journal or diary <coughs> like how productive you are today this is what actually uh, the diary actually comes only for this not to write stories not to write love stories actually you have to write exactly how you are productive the whole day plan yourself every day guys i always tell you every day by 9 o'clock night you sit and write what you are going to write tomorrow and just try this for 21 days in your life definitely you will find a difference so you have to do make to do list every day at 9 o'clock what you are going to do tomorrow even if it is really really funny things you are going to meet uh, you are going to just spend time even watching on uh, looking at mobile that also you write it's okay tomorrow if you see you know how much time you are productive how much time you are not productive so that that way you have to tame yourself to be a uh, responsible adult okay so now comes to this entrepreneur thing ambition and perseverance it's really very important at any point of time you should not give up tough time you have to really uh, find the problem problem always you have to find the problem uh, and to find the solution problem plus solution always opportunity see for in many people i entrepreneur itself i am telling you see uh, flipkart amazon uh, facebook ambani even ambani big by 4g 5g they are they have mint money in this pandemic situation why because they think different from others they they have found that problem they make the problem as an opportunity they created obstacle as an opportunity that is very important you have you should not self pity yourself like oh pandemic ho gaya abhi kya karna hai pandemic ho gaya i can't move out i can like that you should not sit you should think pandemic now so we are going to do something different i am going to start my own digital marketing i am going to start something definitely you uh, that uh, youngsters i can say they are really super smart in handling uh, gadgets or in uh, anything like you know they are easy uh, adoptable people because definitely you are uh, you are in the urge to learn and you want to like you know be a successful whereas for us it's difficult to adopt to the environment but we try we keep trying it that's doesn't matter but you people really are very smart i i 100% i am like you know i have a belief that you i always think why this pandemic comes i i was sometimes i think maybe this viral world we call this now as viral world it's going to be a digital world that's why pandemic has come because uh, digital is going to like you know occupy the whole world there is some, always some change will be keep on coming we have to adopt the change okay let me move on to my topic actually ambition and persistence so persistence is like you know uh, you have to persistence means to, you have to be clear and 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 you should have a very important uh, goals and always as i said uh, consistency you have to be like you know always think in different angle uh, how this can be done if this if there is a problem here don't think like everybody thinks think different that is really very important don't go in a path where everybody goes so the next comes is willingness and listening which is very important to become an entrepreneur willingness means <clears throat> always you have to willingness only will uh, make you to form a team and always you have to listen to people you have to this is what i said update yourself to the future through continuous learning now everybody should know digital otherwise you can't survive now so always uh, update yourself according to the world okay be an effective communicator for that what you have to do is communication is not talking communication is actually listening so that's why you you un, you are you understand this clearly god has given you two ears but only one mouth so you should listen first to the people to become a successful entrepreneur listen through eyes for listen through eyes through your eyes for and words and 
sorry, I think listen through your ears. There's some mistake in the presentation. Listen through your ears for words and listen through your eye for body language. See, some people you can even they won't tell anything, but from their body language, you can understand whether they are really interested in buying anything from you or not. OK, next comes for the entrepreneur. Very important thing is creativity, courage and risk taking. Creativity means always keep trying new things to find what fits best. This creativity, how you have to do creativity means creativity requires for the demand. You have to think always in that way. Then only you can be a successful entrepreneur. You cannot create now uh, some uh, toy made out of mud that nobody likes it now. Nobody likes it means it's like it's really good, very safe, but you have to think what actually the world needs. You have to think in that way. OK, each experience leads to new opportunities in order to use the potential of creativity. You must develop the courage to take risk and overcome challenges. This is very important girls, guys risk taking. You should have the ability to take risk because uh, the, those people only can become a successful entrepreneur. OK, uh, you should not uh, risk at the safer level you can take. For example, you are investing some around two to uh, five thousand rupees. You try to earn profit. Seven thousand rupees is fine. In for that you can work. Don't expect too much profit in the beginning like that. You keep yourself uh, go to next level. Then invest 7000 and try to earn 10000 like that. You have to find out and you, sh you should not uh, invest 10000. And if you get only 2000 means it's not a very uh, in, uh, profitable business. So you make sure you are taking risk, but that risk is in your limit. You have to be very clear in that. Then the second third comes is assertiveness and confidence. Definitely all entrepreneurs should need this confidence for anything. You need confidence. Entrepreneurs needs more confidence because when you go and talk something about your thing, about your product or about your uh, business, you should have a confidence. You should know the value of your business. Uh, there are so many objections comes, but later on you will by handling the objections. You will come to know like you know how to handle successfully that you will learn, but only by practicing only by keep on doing it every day only you can be a successful person. So while you must listen, you must also know when to assert your opinion and raise your voice. It means you have to be strong, very strong on your belief. Belief system is very important because you created this business and you you know the value of this and you have to be stand out in that. You should not compromise your belief system for anything. Be sure of what you believe and don't be afraid to stand up for those beliefs. Always stand up for your belief. Then these are all the normal thing guys. Avoid last minute. This I always want to give to all my students. Avoid last minute stress. This how you can avoid last minute stress means you should not postpone your uh, everyday work. This is uh, it seems like you have a lot of time. You may think even the students, even I, I was like doing this exam time means you can study in the last minute. First, when the school starts, I, I immediately do all my studies up to date, like till one month I am able to follow. When the portions raised up, I cannot do my regular stuff. These are all the things I faced it, so I don't want my you know everyone. I always tell to my students like don't procrastinate your things. Try to do it at that time when you want to do it. Do it when you don't want to do it. Don't do it, but don't tell yourself that we can do it tomorrow. That tomorrow never comes guys always and especially in this. I don't want to scare you guys in this pandemic and all. Plan your day. Always plan your day, which is very important. Be productive, set goals. Work on it. Be consistent. Develop discipline. Here I want to talk one small thing. Discipline, discipline. Everybody will say, but you know what is discipline? Discipline is something which you can do even at tough times, which you cannot do and you should do. That is discipline. Discipline is not every day getting up, going to college and coming back and keep your things in the proper place. It's not discipline. Discipline is something which is really even in tough times. If you are following it, then that is a real discipline. So try to follow that and last as I am a wellness coach. I always put this slide to my people. While adult normally adult gains more weight, so make sure that you, you are not gaining weight because when you graduate, you don't have anything to do and you 
start ending up uh, you ending up eat more and uh, they say it's a growing age you can eat definitely you can eat but always eat with consciousness and always do exercise every day make yourself to do any kind of exercise that really keeps you um, energetic okay then this is definitely important take a day off sunday they always say sunday is off day for me sunday is always on day spend time with your family and friends which is really important always try to maintain relationship which is really really very important in life without relations without uh, friends or without family we can't succeed in our life so just be yourself and you have to spend time for yourself also okay uh, sit uh, and this are all calming strategies find things that you help focus to improve your efficiency always sit in a calm place it looks it looks very weird to uh, for this age to sit calm in one place and do meditation they don't like it but i really tell you guys you practice for 21 days just sit calm no need to do heavy breathing pranayam kapalbhati no need to do all those just sit calm just listen your breath listen your breath for 10 minutes every day 21 days you see how you are handling the uh, objections you can see in your life negative people and all how you are so finally guys thanks this is like um, it's really a wonderful uh, uh, like to be with you i really love it and um, thanks for the people who gave me this opportunity and i'm really i don't know am i fulfill the uh, chap I mean topic given to me but i am happy in giving you this guys because future is like very future uh, people a future sit you are all future citizens so i really want to have you these strong things in your life than the regular uh, thing oh my god wait 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 yeah i think i am done with my slides uh, i think uh, okay ma'am no yeah. now question and answers yeah you can yes answer. i would like to uh, invite janvi ma'am and shrikala ma'am to take over the question and answer sessions yes Yes. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am, for the very fruitful session. It was really beautiful. Uh, I want them to be like you know benefited instead of telling. See, everybody will tell after BBA you do this, after BMA you do this. Uh, that I I am not a regular counselor, guys, because right. I just want to teach people the real life skills. Right, ma'am. It is yeah. they they'll help you. It help them for their life long. Yeah. uh students please post your questions in uh, the chat box it is really lovely how you told them about handling failures or following the passions and importance of having passion in life yes. because at this age they really don't know yes. where they are directed and what they are they are yeah. being influenced from all sides so no actually we i also i, I shared my experience also basically uh, maybe i am not a good engineer i am not born for engineering thing i always feel myself that's why i left my kids in their passion uh, right. i don't blame my parents because my parents also want the best from me and they gave me the best i really love it but in our times we don't have the options much uh, they say either engineer or doctor or lawyer so and my father just put me ended up in doing engineering yeah. that's okay i loved it i finished it and i even worked it some some time but for me if you ask me the real talent i have is communication right right and realizing that is very important that what age you are that is not important but uh, you should understand what you really like doing and following that as a career or following that that's why i selected this profession because there are a people comes with for me like parents will say ma'am please tell them to take engineering group tell them to take medicine i said no 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 first i will discuss with them i will find the strength then i will tell them according to their thing because that comes out really really very well if you sit and talk with them you have to really sit and talk with them they are really super talented i can say super talented super smart youngsters are super smart uh, because they are very clear on what they want many if i you know if i handle so far they are very clear in exactly what they want what they want so yeah. if you ask them to proceed in that field they are very happy and even for college guys it's not late for them they can now 
now we also they can think like you know what they are really good at it. if you are if you are un, if you like you know judge yourself that you are good at this then if you really work on that definitely you will achieve i 100% guarantee for that right Students, yeah. I think uh, am I very clear in uh, presenting my uh, thing is like you know English. Uh, I try to Marathi. I know only little little words. Hindi also very yeah. I was trying <laughs> this first message also. I got it from my friend actually. Uh, uh, namaste, Maja. <laughs> <laughs> That's I good. have to learn language. Uh, there are two questions. Uh, yeah. First question is which thing is best to, uh, to start up our goals for BMS students? BMS students. Yeah, uh, you can go with the management side. OK, um, like for example, see if you really ask me, I will also check in the Internet and I will tell you because I don't know much about Frankly, I always accept my thing. I don't know much about because BMS, B accounts, all this stuff. If you really put it on the internet, you will get plenty of things. Uh, as I, I don't know whether you people know me or not. I am basically a career counselor um, for grade 9 to 12 kids. OK, after graduation, if you ask me, uh, I can only check on the net and tell you guys. Because exactly BMS is a, as you say, it's a management. What is that? I'm taking Bachelor, from you. Guys. Management, huh? management, management, management. Yeah, of course, management means definitely you go to manage things, right? You can go in banking sector and you can go in uh, administration sector and you can uh, wherever you can manage management systems. Huh? Mm -hmm. Management BMS. service. Structure. Studies, studies. Studies, management studies. OK, uh, see where you can have to like uh, that's what I can say, like uh, where you manage like, you know, any office, anything, any banking sector or financial sector or industries, they need a, uh, they have an administration, right? Where you, where yeah. you can manage things. I think that's all. Right. And there are three uh, branches in that, uh, uh, like our college is offering three specializations, marketing, HR and finance. Ah, marketing HR is a real without sales. There is no economy, right? So <laughs> so marketing is like, you know, booming industry all the time. Uh, though the people has made it, uh, you know, a little cheaper because of the target stuff. I always say marketing or sales is nothing but you are exchanging values for the price. So yeah. you don't think that uh, going to sale is really no, you have to achieve the target. Don't think like that. Always when you are selecting some field, you analyze that field. What is it exactly? That's what I would say. For example, sales. Many people go for sales immediately after graduation. Why? Because it is easy to get it. But you have to really work hard. But at that time, I want everyone to understand what is selling. Mm. Selling is not just going, give you a product and get the money. Selling is something you are giving the values. You are helping people what they need. You always show care, care in selling. And with that result, you are getting price. So you think like that and you work on that. Marketing, what you said? The other question? HR, HR, human resource. Yeah, and that is, they are the king of all companies, HR. So HR, yeah. like, you know, you, they, yeah, every company has got that HR. Nobody likes it, but, uh, HR people, nobody likes it, but you they are the one who always uh, uh, create people for companies to build companies and uh, help uh, the employees. So uh, you can every company has got HR. You can just get in now. I think it's like everything is online. It is easy to get jobs. There are so much job available. Only employers are less now. So make sure that you get into right. You Google it and uh, yeah, it's really Guys, I can tell you one thing. You should have the potential to just work on every day. Be productive. That's all I can say. Be productive and you always before going to bed or once you get up, you stand in the mirror and you ask yourself what we did today. Are we even if you're applying for jobs, write it. I applied this and I got rejected. It's very fine. Rejection is very fine. It's very, very by rejection. You will learn so many things in life. See, 
I am not saying Microsoft, Bill Gates, college dropout, and uh, this everyone is college dropout accessible, but I'm not telling like you people have to drop out from college, but you see Bill Gates college dropout, but he's a real talent technical person. Even in college, he was like a, a star person. He's not a failure person. He don't want to proceed college. He came out of the college. So people normally take Bill Gates college dropout. He has become a success person. No, Bill Gates is a real talented person. That's why he can able to survive in this film. Even Steve Jobs. That you have to study those books. I want you all to read this book. I don't know whether you like it or not. Rich Dad, Poor Dad. You read that book. That really helps you uh, in you know achieving your um, goals. Yeah. Uh, Ma'am, there is one more question. Uh, how do we develop ourselves to face corporate world? Yeah, you have to be corporate for that. Yeah, let me tell you clearly. Corporate, corporate. That word itself is like you know. Um, you have to be smart first and you have to be outspoken and you have to be like, you know, uh, you have to have an easy adoptable nature. For example, the corporate company face uh, any name Shivangi. This is your target. You have to complete this. Any corporate company will work only for profit. They definitely they give a facility to the people. But if you compare the facilities and the price, the price is definitely high. So always corporate companies definitely want the best from you. So you try to uh, empower yourself. For example, if when you are going for a corporate interview, first I'll tell you how to go for a corporate interviews. You have to dress yourself very nicely, carry yourself very nicely and be bold. It doesn't mean that you have to wear a new dress. You can wear some dress which is really suits you nicely and carry yourself with bold and confidence. When you are going for a corporate interview, uh, inside you might be having that butterflies, all this stuff. Interviews means it happens. I also face, but don't show it outside. Take a deep breath and sit and tell exactly what. Don't definitely don't lie to any people. Even if you don't know, just tell I don't know. That really adds more value than being honest, gives more value than telling lies. That's my personal opinion. And uh, if I ask if the corporate company ask definitely what experience you have, you can boldly say I'm just fresh out from college. How much experience you expect from me and how you can handle it means ah, definitely I can experience if you give me job. Definitely I can explain like that. If you say boldly, they'll say she's a, she's approaching in a different way. They'll start liking you the way you answer for the question. Definitely technical questions. You have to answer technically all the question you cannot answer like, you know, I know I can handle. I can give big thing to the company. No, no, don't tell like that. I can give my best to the company. Don't tell I can make this company big. Nobody likes it because there are many people who can make the company big. You just tell always I can give the best for this company to my my best. Like you always talk in such a way that you are confident and bold. You should never give that attitude. That's what I'm trying to say that attitude and mindset, positive attitude. When you are going to interview, don't afraid. Don't like, you know, whether I'll get this job or not like that. You don't think I'm going to get this job. I'm going to do it like that. You have to go. Or you, you imagine yourself in that company when you're going for an interview, you know, always you imagine yourself that you are going to be the big in a big position in that company like that. You attend interview. Definitely you should learn the technical skills, technical knowledge you should have. For example, if they ask you like, you know, how you manage these accounts. I'm not in a very good in accounts, but if they ask me, you should know. You should know to handle that also. Uh, but even if you don't know anything, you always say, I'll try to learn. I'll try to. That helps a lot. Right. You just don't say I don't know. You say I'll try to learn positive. Be positive in handling things. Uh, there is a question from Vaibhavi. Uh, she says that she and her friends are thinking of uh, working abroad, mm. having job opportunities abroad. So what mm. things they should do to? Uh, Where you want to go first? Abroad means. Vaibhavi, can you throw some more light on it? Where exactly? Which country are you planning to visit? Hello, Vaibhavi, are you there? Uh, She's not specified the country actually. No, it's OK. You are going for education, higher education or job. I want to know. Job is written. Job. job. 
Yeah. Job means definitely you should get uh, the proper legal documents from that company. You apply for that. I I also want to know which country because mm -hmm. uh, because uh, normally you should go through a proper channel, go through proper legal documents, put your resumes, definitely uh, get all those visas. And I want to know which country because I travel many countries, but I want to know which country specifically. Then I can answer clearly. Let's see if she uh, mentions it by the end of the session. Mm. Uh, there is a question from Ishika. She mm. says, I have a small startup and I have been working with it for past two years. Very good. Uh, initially, I didn't get any growth. Mm. Now, as I'm growing day by day, I'm getting continuous discouragement. When discouragement happens, sometimes uh, I can deal with it. But on daily basis, uh, her family is uh, discouraging it to shut it down. Uh, mm. So. To uh, do I deal with it because it is making me depressed and I'm having sleepless nights. Oh, I'm sorry for that, but I'll tell you one thing by going to depression. You can't achieve that. You have to put it clear. I can understand. Definitely you are facing difficulties that ends into depression. But um, if I know what kind of startup I can, hey, it's OK. I don't want to want to know what kind of startup. See one thing. I'll, what is her name? You said Ishika. Ishika. Uh, Ishika, uh, one thing I'll tell you very clearly. First, I'll appreciate at this young age you start up a company. Very good for that. I really appreciate it. But uh, when you start up, you start up with some ideas, right? You see whether that ideas you are still having it and are you progressing in that idea? For example, if you are doing some uh, exporting like some dresses or designing some dresses, you have to think this is an example I'm telling. I don't know what startup you have started. Designing means you have to update yourself to the latest design and you have to have a creativity and you have to have a path in which you can sell. For example, now all shops are closed. Now you have to open the digital one. Everybody is having digital now, but you have to think how you can be different from others in your startup also. When it is initially it was done, then it started growing, right? You find out that growing period, how we are, what you did at that time. So that you find out and try to repeat that. And on the top of it, you try to you try to push yourself to some extent. For example, as I said, digital. So digital means how you can be creative in digital, how you can attract people, how you can start people buying your things. You have to think, you have to write and think how you can be different. For example, for me, like, you know, I am a wellness coach and career counselor. I always desire think how should I improve my to get clients? What should I do? So first I have to be fit and healthy and I have to like, you know, make people to see. Definitely I have to post on Facebook and I have to know you people are very good in Facebook, Insta and you know like that. You have to post your startup and uh, because digital world, it has become a digital world. Now you have to instead of going into depression, Ishika, you just think. Make, uh, that's what I said. You are depressed means you are like, you know, associated with someone who says negative around you or you are like, you know, you yourself is thinking I can I can't do this. You only desire to do it. We only desire to do it. So you think what we can do, how you can improvise to go to next level like that. You have to if you really think first relax yourself, take a deep breath. Uh, 10 minutes, uh, you just do breathing. You just follow your breath. Then you sit calm. This I one small secret. I'll tell you if you really want to work very hard, get up early in the morning. That's really helps. Why I'm telling you is like if you are doing some work, you just try this for three days. Then you see if you wake up at five o'clock and sit with your book seven, five till six to six thirty and I write something what you want to do. You feel that whole day is going to be energy day. I, I I think it gives you answer. Don't go into depression because that doesn't going to help you. Instead, you prove yourself. That takes time, Ishika, but definitely you can do it. You tell your people who is like, you know, demoralizing you or demotivating you. You sit and talk with them and explain to, you, to them and you show your success to them so that they'll understand. They will give you importance. They'll give you priority. You tell them this is what I'm going to do. Now I'm little down because the, the, the I mean, field itself is down. The business is down, so I'm trying to improve. Please give me support. You sit and talk to them. That gives adds more value. You will never go into depression or uh, whatever problem you face, guys. You sit and talk with those people. For example, even if you're fighting with your friends, don't just go away. 
instead you just go and talk with them because being an elder person i i never have any enemy in my life i never develop enemies in my life that is my principle i am living in that principle i don't want to develop enemies even with the, if people fight with me what i'll do is i'll just go and talk to them i never have ego only the one person i always fight is my husband i always say because maybe i'm expecting more from him just a joking but always what i'm trying to say is if you are in depression try to come out of that you see why as i said turn around turn around why you you always ask why i am like this you think about the starting thing and you turn around make it positive make your depression as or is a depression positive expression expression something you just make it in that way that it will be helpful uh, okay. hello from yeah. hello good morning madam yeah uh, relating to your answer just mm. now what you said what mm. was perfect but i also want you to throw light on the uh, internet comments which the students face at this point of time mm. they put uh, your, their achievements or they put their uh, uh, videos on the internet mm. and most of them they get the comments mm. so with that also uh, there might be depression so how yes. can they handle the depression when they uh there's the negative bad comments negative yeah bad comments on the internet because most of them are facing this type of comments and this type of depression they go into the depression oh uh, yeah this also i you people are facing with internet when we are in college we face it in the yes offline face face offline we yes offline you are facing yeah. digital that's all that's all the difference guys i'll tell you very clearly how to handle it when people are putting bad comment first you put thank you very much I really love it. You nailed it. You just put it like that. Definitely, that people won't put it again. I can tell you clearly. This is my personal experience. I, you try to when you are putting something, always there'll be negative and positive. Don't expect only positive. So you always open for both decisions. You see, if you put it like that, I really love it. I thank you very much. I really respect your comment. you you also put you, you just think why he is putting like that maybe some personal see i'll tell you my personal experience when i am in college maybe it looks very weird now but i'll just want to share with you people see one person like you know he was like coming after me and he was like you know he started to come after me from day 1 imagine until i was 4 years of college till last day he coming at the back of me every day i was to go by a cycle and he used to come in a cycle with me i ne- he never talk he never talk and all uh, my girlfriend says see your bodyguard has come what i did on the last day i called him and i talked to him why you are coming every day what is your problem what do you want i asked him he said ma'am i love you definitely that is going to come i love you then i said very clearly see there's nothing wrong in loving me it's fine i am really a very good friend of you you came all the day every day i really appreciate that. but i definitely never fall in love that's what i said that's my opinion because my father sent me only for education i don't develop any interest on anyone see this is all like example i'm sharing with you see in the same way when people put bad comments take it take it face it guy face it girls face it and try to break it that's really you people have those uh, no, uh talent in you because when you boldly post you have to accept this also face it you just tell him whoever is putting it you just tell them like i love your comment i really love your comment thank you very much he is watching and only putting no so definitely you know right you have done really good then why you are afraid of that why you are i mean taking that things into your brain just forget it and leave it and go maybe it's hard for this age but in after some time if you keep doing that you just tell yourself i did right i did good i am i am fine i am perfect you tell always yourself like that you no comments will uh, even affect you bad comments right uh man there is a question from a 12th standard art student uh, mm. he says that i am confused which vocation to choose my fate mm. is that i like to uh, work with i like to do some work which brings me in contact with a lot of people mm he is an art student art, art. Yeah. one second ah one second just give me a second yeah yeah hello appa now theater ko padran pa ore nimisham 
சரி சரி நானே கூப்பிடுறேன் He's not able to decide uh, which stream to choose because he likes to interact with people. So mm. accordingly, he wants to choose a profession. Oh, very good. If you are really people lover, uh, then since you have taken sociology and uh, psychology, is it? Yeah, yeah. Definitely, my pos- my profession. <laughs> mm-hmm. I can say only that because sociology definitely you have you can go into a social awareness. Uh, you go to proceed sociology in your graduation or psychology psychology is real tough but uh, i won't say it's like you know studying human's brain is real tough okay so but uh, even god doesn't know still finding god himself doesn't know like he just created and sent us okay uh, what i'm trying to say is sociology you can take it because uh, that sociology has got more uh, variety of uh, i mean uh, exposure to the thing because Uh, you deal with like you know you can work on ngos or you can work on like you know social uh, activities you can do on your own so since you are a people lover you can do with social activities and you can generate money in that there are so many things you can either take psychology or sociology since you are a good communicator if you, as you say take these two it will be like really good for you than economics economics is a math subject don't take it if you are not good in math Uh, and uh, just uh, there is another student who is asking just the opposite uh, question that he is already an entrepreneur and he says that i am very quiet and i do not like to be under spotlight mm-hmm. and i prefer to keep working on whatever i do on my own so is okay. it okay to not socialize with the world if it is not related to my work if it is not a customer related business it's not necessary that you have to show your face to the public mm-hmm. what is your kind of startup business matters for example if you are a customer dealing person for example if you are living with a health if you are dealing with health products if you are dealing with uh, jewelry if you are dealing with uh, fashion if you are dealing with clothes definitely you have to show up uh, for your stuff that also if you design you need not to show up you can put a model and do it but for example what i'm trying to say is if you are uh, providing supply, uh, supplies to computer things or if you are providing this thing, you need not to be like you know social person you can be an anti social not matter at all the thing is your talent matters yeah. at one point of time guys clearly understand whatever is your strength try to bring it out that only helps you lot to achieve things yeah uh, regarding the country that you had asked no in the first question yeah yeah friend has mentioned that she wants to go to korea south korea <sighs> korea south korea definitely you can't go to north korea okay south korea it's really good one but uh, very nice uh, they are very, i know as far as koreans they are very pop singers i don't know which thing you want to go now what is all everywhere they are going everywhere but uh, think which field you want to go and how the country is uh, uh, grow uh, country growth in that for example if you are going to korea uh, korea is good at what you have to think exactly what you have a, like you know once you you are going for a job right yeah yeah job please. job okay you have to think how you can be uh, progressive there okay how you can be successful there like for example uh, example only i'm telling i don't know about korea i'll also google it and i will if you send her thing i'll privately message her yeah. but what i'm trying to say is for example if you are going to california if you are going uh, to uh, singapore definitely singapore is a trading country you have to be very good in trading it has a super business in trading whereas california if you go it's a software city silicon valley you have to be very good in computer and you can have a very super future there like that if you are going to korea where for what purpose you are going like what kind of job is yours and what is the future there you have to see uh, in korea uh, because uh, that you have to message me i have my mail id right you ask that girl to message me separately i'll find it out and tell her like if she tells her like exactly what is her job 
and i can check with like you know that how the country is progressing in that then you can go otherwise don't go yeah. it's not advisable for example i'm telling if you are not getting other countries if you are going if the country is not guaranteeing you job please don't don't go there don't waste your time be in india and first progress in india then korea i am they are very tricky persons so you make sure that uh, you know you have a safety in your job and progress in your job that you identify first or if you send me i can identify and i can message you separately but uh, legal documents of course you should have a proper legal documents and visa and you ask that company how much visa extension they are giving you and if the uh, that uh, whatever that revenue they are giving is really happy for you then and the company is progressing then you can go think about the company and the country progress in that company yeah and uh, there is uh, another question that uh, uh, asked by vaibhavi she says mm. that i can stay up late at night i am not a morning person but mm. my parents and family members ask me to wake up early for morning studies so mm. does it really uh, affect if uh, i do it early in the morning or this happens with every world everyone even my daughter i say It happens with everyone, but it's okay. If you are very productive in the night, you can just do it in the night, and you can you explain to your parents, like you know, instead of arguing with them, instead of fighting with them, instead of uh, shouting with them, you can just say, mom. You can tell your mom. That's what my daughter. I always ask my daughter to say, don't shout. Now also, like when she shout, when my daughter shout, I won't shout at that same time. but when she is calm i'll just go and explain to her that what she did is not correct she that time she'll realize when she is shouting i'll also shout then it will end up in so many drama what i'll always tell you tell your mom definitely it's fine why be we to sit in the night and study it's not at all a problem the only small signs issue is there that that's what parents never tell anything with logic because they don't know i'll tell you clearly why they say there is a hope you you hope you also know this let me I, i'll also explain there is a hormone or whatever it's melatonin there is a chemical in our body which secretes only in the night time uh, like from uh, 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock the melatonin chemical is happens in our body that comes only when all your it's complete dark you need that one that time only that melatonin normally happen secrete secrete in our body melatonin is very important for digestion and for your brain to work very nicely and for uh, heart these three things melatonin is very important if you are sitting late in the night your melatonin secretion will be less but this is very common in young adult old adult till 30 it is very common for them once they get family automatically they'll come into routine but it doesn't matter my son uh, he is a night owl he is not an early bird he always for him uh, the day starts only at night 8 o'clock and ends at 3 no 4 4 5 o'clock in the morning i used to tell him but uh, i then i sometimes i find let him experience i make him sure that he is having a healthy food and he is doing exercise but what i'm trying to say vibhavi is um, your parents are telling right you tell your parent i can completely understand i respect your word you are telling only for my benefit these three words you tell your parents will come down for you these three words you tell mom i'm really respecting your words i understand but give me some time like that you say and i'll tell you one small thing to make uh, both of them happy two days you try to get up early in the morning not very early try to get up at 6:30 two days she'll be very happy and you tell her, these two days i tried this four days is for me some you tell your mom that any time which time you work that i can be productive at that time i'll try to change you tell this your mom will be like start liking you she'll never tell you your parents will never tell you again to get up early in the morning and be productive and be successful why or maybe your parents are telling me maybe they think if you study in the morning definitely if you study in the morning your memories are like your work damn good your brain work very fresh 
because you imagine seven hours of rest, seven to six hours of sleep, and how your brain is like, you know, all your neurons are very active. It's, that happens. Even I didn't do that. I didn't do this when I am in school age or college. Age. It happens with everyone. It keeps on telling all parents. Telling. When you are a parent also, you may be telling. I don't know. Uh, there's a last question uh, that is a banking and insurance student. And mm. you say that I'm also a well, uh, good communicator. Mm. So what career should I choose? Uh, you can study in your uh, field itself. You are insurance and banking, right? Mm -hmm. You yeah. definitely need communication for that to cover because when you want to client to get take insurance, you have to communicate. You have to tell the value of your company and how it's giving other than price. How, what are all the benefits of you have to explain, right? You can progress in your career itself. Being a communicator, as you said, very I really uh, I mean happy for that. You understand your strengths. Communicator, you, even in uh, that wealth and insurance and banking and insurance, you need communication. Very important. So you can just proceed in your banking and insurance itself. It's very fine. If you are really good in banking and insurance, you proceed in that. Communication helps a lot. Yeah. As I said, communication is listening, not speaking. Mm -hmm. uh, there's one more question. I'm sorry. Uh, that uh, it is asked by Neeraj. Uh, mm -hmm. He says that is it better to take a job and settle down here in India or go abroad and study and take a job there? Mm. Abroad, if you really get scholarship, if you really get sponsor, uh, like you know scholarship, you can't don't spend money and uh, go and study because as I said now, another four years is going to be tough because of Corona. And uh, well, even if you study, there is no guarantee that you get job. Otherwise, unless otherwise, it is a STEM course. STEM course means science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Because you don't um, blame me for this, because world is uh, giving importance to all over the world. If you see STEM courses like science, technology, engineering, and mathematics has got more value if you study outside. Because I won't say this art and all is uh, it's not a good subject. It's really a damn good subject. Every subject is very good. What I'm trying to say is uh, when you are going to study abroad, you have to really, really, really think whether you will get sponsored and whether you can get that money back by doing job. If these two things are there, if you really guaranteed for job and you can earn money what you invested, for example, if you invest some around 30 lakhs, okay, definitely if you are, depends on which country you are going, that 30 lakh, you should get it in five years at least. And you should have a job for that in that country itself. Then you can go. Otherwise, don't go. And art subjects, especially any art subjects, any country is different. They need their chartered accountant, their financiers, their law. It is completely different for each country. So you decide yourself uh like when if you spend some money can you able to get it back it's like kind of a reinvesting purpose then you can go otherwise don't go you have to think whether they are guaranteeing the job they'll say but make sure check with the check with reviews when you are going for some universities go check with their universities reviews tell by the students itself then you proceed uh ma'am there's a question from sakshi she said mm -hmm. that because of this uh, COVID situation, she's really worried about her future and how her career will be secured. And that very, is good good question. Question. very good question. Very good question. I love to answer. Why am I listening to COVID? Okay. Uh, COVID. I'll tell you Sakshi, right? Yes. Sakshi, I'll tell you one thing. This is, as I said, even plus response is equal to outcome. You have to make this obstacle as an opportunity. You just go to any job. You, if you are like apply for interviews, just uh, tell like you know. And one more thing, guys, I want to tell you all. If there is a corona or whatever it is, the company or the universities will ask you what you really did in this corona. They will ask you like you know what really productive, productively you what you have done. You make yourself. You did something really very nice. For example, how you can say, how I'll say, uh, like how, for example, if you are going for some 
job they'll ask you like you know i can't give you job because already we are like you know uh, employees are more we can't able to pay corona you can say immediately what you can say is yeah i completely understand sir your company's position but i want to use this as an opportunity i want to give my best you first start accepting their level of salary don't demand salary when you are going what you have to do is you still i can give my best i can work from home try to give your best try to do some benefit for the company then you ask for the raise in the salary don't ever go and demand your salary at this time when you achieve it when you get experience then you can demand you can nail your salary to the company now you just take this as an opportunity sakshi i what i'm trying to say is do something innovative or different from others in this corona for example i told my daughter i'm just telling you this is an example it's not necessary that you have to do it i told my daughter she is in grade 10 i told my daughter since it is a corona you are having super holidays you are not even playing you are not even going anywhere start writing some article about corona itself i told her i uh, do some research because she is very good in biology she wants to proceed her education in biology i told do research on corona like the same way you do research on your subject how you can take it to next level like that you do write some article girls it will really guys you it really helpful maybe you were not initially you are not good at writing article but you try to do something different from others in this corona and you 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 show that to the company like what you did even in this corona for the uh, society or you can even do little service or help and you can write an article about that and you can show like how i help anyway your parents won't allow make you to allow to go to corona but like uh, some example i'm just telling you can you can show to the company that how you care for the society how you care for the country how you are different from others how you take this obstacle as an opportunity like that you can say and you can don't ever never afraid of don't take any fear in your brain always use obstacle as an opportunity and try to come out of it i'll tell you my personal story if you don't like it or not also i'm going to tell it because i have 8 minutes time see me uh, in this corona in this pandemic i lost 33 kgs weight because i was 90.8 last november 2019 i was 90.8 personally with my self dedication definitely you need self dedication realization whatever you say it will all come at the age after 40 but i personally take this took this as a challenge uh, corona you can't go out you can do exercise at home i was uh, like do exercise take some water nice food uh, correct food balanced food and then i reduced almost 33 kg so like this you can use as anything as an opportunity it's really uh, inspiring man mm. inspiring for all ladies in my age definitely yeah yeah uh, there's a uh, person i uh, want to uh, apply for jobs in australia so mm. uh, what are the mm-hmm. career opportunities over there australia it's really a good country uh, they have a different uh, uh, systems not like common systems mm, you know about australian lifestyle right they are very happy people no stress uh, lifestyle alone i tell you australia uh, monday tuesday to thursday they work very hard monday they'll talk about the weekend how they have spent it friday they plan for the weekend so australia if you are going to australia it's really nice and you have so much asians there uh, you just see as i said to all people the other one who want to go to korea which company you are going whether that uh, field has got progress in that company and you make sure that company is giving you like you know all kind of visas oh my god what happened hello nothing i'm just your uh, screen is shared okay okay so it's like that uh, you can just think about that uh, you just think about whether it is like you know going for a job whether you can able to progress in that job and company like all the visa procedures and whether you can able to earn 
more than what you can earn from India. Like that, all this possible. You just write some checklist, guys. Like plus minus plus minus. By going to Australia, what all you can do? And you check with that uh, Australian companies and websites. How what they are, how they are offering you, how the visa procedures. All these you check online, and you can just go on if you really have plus more plus. Uh, uh, that Isika girl who had also uh, asked a question earlier. She says that after my AS and A level, I got a scholarship to study at Cambridge for my higher education. Very good. Uh, congratulations. Yeah, yeah but uh, I had to pay for my stay, which I felt was way expensive. So I continued to study here for my graduations. Is it the right thing I did? No, if you get a sponsor for ah, now, it's not advisable. Cambridge you got means it's really, really good. You are a very good student because it's one among the top schools in UK. But there is no job guarantee in UK. You have taken a very good decision in Shika by staying here and studying because now because of the Brexit problem, they are not offering job to Indians. So it is always safe. You have to always explore after graduation. What is the opportunity to get job? Then only you can proceed to that country. Ishika, you have taken a very good decision by staying here. Definitely you proceed further for post graduation to some country with full scholarship. And when you go for it's really a good decision you have taken Ishika because when you go for post graduation, don't go to UK. Instead, you apply to US and um, European countries like uh, uh, Netherlands, Germany, um, all these countries, uh, European, many Scandinavian countries. You try to apply those countries and you try to get your post graduation there with the scholarship. And when you are doing scholarship, when you are doing post graduation itself, you can earn money for your living, which is like a, a research scholar, research assistant, RA or teaching assistant, TA. You are no need to go do server or job and all for after graduation. You can easily get some good job as a teaching assistant and RA and you can that is very good, comfortable for your living. So you proceed further for your post graduation. My if you ask me, I'll say US is best. You can apply for even European countries. Australia is also OK. Always think for the job. Once you finish, if you get job guarantee, then you go. Visa procedures, everything you see, but uh, you have taken a very good decision like staying in India and studying because after graduation, I have many friends or many of my people. They are not getting job in UK. They are coming back because of the visa problem. Uh, there is a question from Vaibhavi. She asked that uh, doing MBA abroad is worth or should I do it in India? Uh, MBA, the best thing is it. Uh, out of all MBAs, France, OK, but it's hard to get it. If you get MBA in a very super university, then go. Otherwise, don't go do it in India. Nasi, Nasi, oh, Nasi Munji College, something is there in Bombay. Nursing. Ah, you just uh, try to do in India unless otherwise if it is not your top universities. Always you have to check universities if it is on the top 10, then you can go. That also the, the ranking systems happens because of the research students, not because of the college. It's because of the how much PhD is coming out of the college. That way only they always they do ranking. But as I say, it's very uh, good to stay here and uh, do it. Dan MBA and all like doesn't have much option in other countries. They uh, want to select those people, their people only for management, administration, finance. Yes, only engineers, doctors cannot go US. It's uh, again a 12 hour, 12, 9, 11 years of studies. And uh, engineers, they have a very good opening. I can't say for you guys now, but engineers also, they want only people like, you know, uh, as I said, STEM subjects only they are taking. That is only it's very good to go abroad. All the MBAs and all, you do it here. Then, if you really get some job, you can go. Yeah. Uh, visa is safe. Student visa is very dangerous. A uh, job visa is safe. Student visa, if, when it is safe, I can, I'll say, only the university should be top ten universities. Then you will get job. Okay. 
F1 visa. They call it as F1 visa in US. And now every country they call it in a different name. But always you have to see whether that university is coming under top 10 and whether that university is guaranteeing job for you. And the job, what you are earning is almost like within five years, if you're able to earn the money you spend it, then you can go. You think all these three possibilities. Yeah, uh, let's take a last question, ma'am. Uh, it is a good representation of all the students mindset currently. Uh, the student writes that uh, during this pandemic, all the lectures are being conducted online and it is difficult for him to stay motivated and encouraged. So mm. what to how to deal with? Definitely it will be difficult initially, but I tell you what is her name? What is her uh, name? He's not written his name. It's okay, okay. Well, whatever, whoever here. Like I'll tell you definitely it is difficult at the beginning. But I'll tell you one thing very clearly. This is going to happen for another two years. If you really have a prolonged uh, thing, you have to come out of it like, you know, how, as I said before, problem, solution, opportunity. How this is, if you consider this as a problem, then it's an, it's a, definitely it's not bad for you. I mean, good for you. If you consider this as an opportunity, uh, you won't like it because social person, cannot stay in front of computer and uh, well definitely, but there is no other option for the safety purpose. You have to go with the government. So what I'm trying to say is you make yourself motivated by arranging uh, Google meet or you know chat with your friends one hour, two hours. If I think whoever is asking that person is a social person. That's why he is like you don't like online stuff. Actually, I'm telling you his post graduation MSc in uh, IT. I see. Uh, definitely for him, like, you know, as I said, you try to um, uh, chat around with your friends. Definitely you have to come out of gadget. But what I'm trying to say is make uh, something like, you know, uh, productive, uh, what would say, like, you know, which keeps you happy. You divert yourself in that, which keeps you happy. You might have something which gives you real happiness. You might have explored because you're an MSc graduate. So you just think and you form a group for that. Who is associated with those same kind of feelings? Form a group and do some activities. And even uh, I can say um, yeah, you can face some challenges, IT challenges, which is happening in the uh, online, try to take those challenges. Hackathon, uh, there are so many hackathon courses are happening. Try to pay small amount and attend those courses that keeps you busy or you form a group of friends who can do this uh, hack, hacking stuff, code breaker and you try to yeah, uh, definitely form a group even for fun and chat. I love to be with friends and uh, for me also it is really difficult. So chat more form a group and uh, you spend one or two times two hours with them and you have to come out of depression or you know whatever that motivation you have to create. I'll tell you motivation. Don't use that word motivation. Motivation will stay only for two to three hours. You have to be inspired. You always use the word inspiration instead of motivation. Inspiration stay throughout your life. That's yes. my small. Thanks a lot, ma'am. Uh, I think we are uh, we'll be done. done. Yes, we are done with the questions. Uh, Shivangi, please. Yeah, ma'am. The best and the beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or even touched. They must be felt by heart. Thank you is one such prayer among them. Mm. So can we have the sponsors, please? Yeah, just a minute. Huh? Yes. Is my screen visible? Yeah. Yes. I go mute. OK, ma'am, these are our sponsors for today's program. It's for Rivi's Family Salon. Can we have the next, please? 
also a gift voucher ma'am which is authorized by revis family salon and also uh, it's a well wisher of sia parivar mm. so yeah thank you so much ma'am uh, actually uh, in today's session we have learned a lot of things uh, you have spoke a lot of things um, and uh, like you said that graduation is not the end it's the beginning uh, there is lot and lot to learn and uh, failures are the actual pillars of success so from failures we should learn step by step life is not smooth uh, we uh, there are hurdles there are ups and downs we should handle it, uh, and learn from it and al always we should have a positive mindset as well yes so thank you ma'am for this wonderful session it was thank great you, to have you ma'am for me also it's a pleasure to have you all here i'm very happy that i am useful for something uh, thanks once again i'll just take a leave right hello ma'am just just a minute want to take a snap requesting all teachers to please switch on their camera thank you ma'am thank you so love much. to see you all uh, thank you so much yeah yeah i'll just take a leave right i can leave yes yes, yes, yes ma'am thank you ma'am thank you uh, everyone like whoever is like at the back office yeah thank you so much now we will be playing a small college video it is like a virtual tour of our college everyone see have a look hum share kijiye ha ha Uh, हो गया क्या शेयर अभी हुआ इट इज स्टार्ट Okay, is it not visible? One second. I'll play it one second. Share कीजिए पहले. हाँ. Is it visible now? <coughs> no. No. <coughs> okay. Oh. Should I share the screen? Ishan, can you share, please? Yes, ma'am. Okay. <laughs>
Ma'am, is the screen visible? Yes. Screen is visible. Mom, you can see the video. Uh, your uh, the screen has come. Is the team screen. Team screen has come. Minimize it and uh, make the video full full screen. Yes. Uh, okay, uh, so the feedback forms will be shared in the class groups. Kindly fill them up. They are shared already in the chat. Okay, ma'am. Student participants, please fill all. Uh, please fill the feedback forms. And uh, now I think we can proceed with. Uh, or a small activity.
before we start with another session for the day. Yes, ma'am. Hello everyone. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Yes, yes kid. Okay. Hello. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I please start your me. camera. Yeah, okay, sir. Hello. Video mila dekha. Share karo. Vapas dekha. Sir, you already carry karara. Excuse me, Kirti, you are on mute. Hello. Ha, Kirti, kindly explain them the instructions. You were on mute. Thank you. Okay, sir. Yes, yeah, okay. Is the screen visible? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. 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 Okay. Hello. Good morning, everyone. I am Kirti Nandan, and I am the host for the activity called Memory Testing. I am sure here we are going to have a good time together for this activity, as it will test your memory power. So, without wasting much of your time, let me start with the activity. But before we actually start the activity, let me tell you certain things about it. I will be showing you images, and you will have to memorize it. I repeat. I will be showing you images and you all have to memorize the images. The actual activity will start once the PPT is ended. So now let's start with the activity. You have to just remember the images sequence wise. As we have come to the end of the slide, now you can see in your top right corner there is a Q&A box. There is one link which is posted there. And the ones who are attending to laptop or PC, you will be able to access to your chat box. Now click on that link and now I will tell you what you are supposed to do. Have you all... Uh, have you all started the link? Kirti, a link has not yet posted, I believe. 
ओके मैम आई जस्ट चेक विथ मैम आई हैव पोस्टेड द लिंक इन क्यू एन ए सेक्शन यू डू पोस्ट इन चैट बॉक्स आल्सो मधुरा दैट विल बी इजी ओके ओके ठीक है I guess now it has come. Is it visible? Yes, yes. Okay, ma'am. Now. ये हमारे डीजीएस के अंदर जो उनको एंटीजन Now let me see how many images you all remember. Please kindly write your name before writing the answer. That is listing the images as per the sequences. Three minutes time is given to list down the activity. So please start your activity. You can rename yourself. You can rename yourself. Hello everyone. Uh, you can add your answers through this plus Madhura, sign over here. Madhura, I think you have. See, students are saying it is not visible. Link cannot be opened. Can you just check that? Madhura, you have posted in a Turkish activities lecture, I think. By some mistake. Uh, okay, sir. I will paste in this. so can you see in the qna section can anybody type yes in the chat box or qna section please not visible Is the link visible? Yes, Madhura. Okay, okay, sir. I request all the participants to please join in with the link.
are telling that the leaf is not working. Students, you can click on the link and type copy paste the code which is there in Q&A. Later at the corner of the screen, there is a plus button. Uh, sir, actually, uh, when you uh, click on the link, now they are asking for sign up, signing in. So they have to sign in and then they have to put the code. Madhura, which ID they should use? Uh, is it Gmail or uh, Microsoft? No, no, ma'am, Gmail account. Okay. Guys, uh, log in, just uh, sign in uh, in the Paglet in, uh, by clicking on that link and then uh, put that code whichever uh, which we have put earlier then you can join it is there anyone who have joined participants Okay, uh, uh, participants, you can type your answer in the chat box also. In Q&A, answer box is there. You can type your answer over there. I request all the participants to uh, write your answers in Q&A section. Along with their names, right, Madhura? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Yes, yes, ma'am. Kirti, can you please show the uh, slide again? Is it visible? Guys, sequence is most important. Ankita, I request you to type in sequence and in one go. Yeah, 
just see the images Hello. Okay, Vaishnavi, I can see your answer. Okay. Shahrukh Khan book. Tom, character, Taj Mahal, glass of water, Mr. Bean, Bulb, Donald's logo, Pluto, Pizza, Peace, Car, Red Fort, Umbrella, Tiger Zoo. Congratulations, Vaishnavi. You did a great job. Pooja, very well done. Even Ankita has done a great Ankita, job. Yeah, yeah, yes, ma'am. Okay, Kitty. Yeah, please tell me. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah. Ha, yeah. Okay. So, Many people are unable to uh, remember it sequence wise, right? Uh, so I'll just uh, uh, tell you how to remember the sequence. I'll just make it uh, very simple uh, by by making it to a poem. Just listen to the poem. I'll reshare the screen and along with it, uh, I'll make a poem. So it will be easy for you to remember. Shall we? बोला मुझे लगी है प्यास लेट मी हैव समर फ्रॉम माई ग्लास तभी वह पहुंचे मिस्टर बिनो बोले आई हैव एन आइडिया लेट गो टू डोमिनोज एंड प्ले सम लूडो एंड हैव सम पिज्जा तभी पिज्जा खत्म करके दोनों कार में बैठ कार में जा बैठे और अपने डेस्टिनेशन रेडफोर्ट जा पहुंचे वह उन्होंने अम्बेला के साथ अपना सेल्फिश फोटो निकाला फोटो निकालते निकालते उनके सामने आया टाइगर टाइगर को देख के तीनों ऐसे भागे के सीधा पहुंचे जा, जा पहुंचे जंगल सीधा जा पहुंचे जू आई रिपीट आई लगे रिपीट शाहरुख खान जी अपने बुक्स को लेके टॉम के पास गए दोनों मिलके ताजमहल के सामने बैठे पढ़ रहे थे तभी टॉम ने बोला मुझे लगी प्यास लेट मी हैव सम वाटर फ्रॉम माय ग्लास तभी वह पहुंचे मिस्टर बिन और बोले आई हैव एन आइडिया लेट्स गो टू डोमिनोज एंड प्ले सम लूडो एंड हैव सम पिज्जा पिज्जा खत्म करके तीनों कार में बैठे और अपना डेस्टिनेशन रेडपोर्ट जा पहुंचे वह उन्होंने अम्बेला के साथ अपना फोटो शूट सेल्फी फोटोज निकाला फोटो निकालते निकालते उनके सामने आया टाइगर टाइगर को देख के तीनों ऐसा भाग्य के सीधा जा पहुंचे जू माई गॉड कीर्ति दैट वॉज अमेजिंग एंड थैंक यू गाइज थैंक यू फॉर योर पार्टिसिपेशन आई रिक्वेस्ट next anchor to take over the session thank you thank you guys
थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच हेलो किरण मैडम सर वी आर डन विद साईश्री मैम ओवर टू यू थैंक यू मैम एम आई ऑडी बाय हेलो यस 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 यू आर अ प्लेजेंट मॉर्निंग टू वन एंड ऑल आई एम हर्ष ठक्कर फ्रॉम द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ मैनेजमेंट स्टडीज योर होस्ट फॉर द डे इट्स अ ग्लैड वेलकम एस आई ब्रिंग्स टू यू दिस मॉर्निंग फिल्ड विद डिजायर्स होप्स एंड ड्रीम्स वी ऑल शेयर अ ड्रीम बिकम्स अ गोल वेन पॉजिटिव एटीट्यूड फ्लेम्स विद इन अस थिंक डीप एज एवरी थाट लीड्स टू गोल एंड सो डज अवर जर्नी सिंस यस्टडे वेलकम ऑल फॉर द सेकेंड सेशन ऑफ तर्कस ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन ऑन बिजनेस इंटेलिजेंस एंड डिसीजन मेकिंग एज इट सेट सक्सेस इज नॉट एन एक्सीडेंट इट्स हार्ड वर्क परसिवरेंस लर्निंग स्टडिंग सेक्रीफाइस एंड मोस्ट ऑफ ऑल लव ऑफ वॉट यू आर डूइंग एंड लर्निंग टू डू एंड हु अदर धैन मिस्टर शंकर राजगोपाल सर टू जस्टिफाई दिस कोर्ट सिंस येस्टडे सर हैज बीन एनलाइटनिंग अस अबाउट द स्किल्स रिक्वायर्ड फॉर ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट सेंचुरी with around 36 years of experience in various sectors of quality safety sustainability business excellence process improvement and change management he is a first member of csr advisory board with institute of public enterprise speaker at ip ccps fiicci cii ndma and iite platforms and many more He has also led the QHSSE journey at Indian and global organizations. A recipient of many awards and applause, sir, your achievements are a real inspiration to all of us. It's pleasure having you, sir, for today's session. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Harsh. Thank you. It's a pleasure and privilege to be back. in the words of arnold schwarzenegger and the most popular uh, question in the past months am i audible and the second yes, one yes sir yes sir is my screen visible yes sir okay yes, sir. you can see this beautiful tarkash backdrop and this fantastic uh, theme you got for this session business intelligence and decision making all right ready to go Yes, sir. Ready. Okay. Yes, sir. And I hope that you are as a good session for business intelligence. You all are live on every platform, including Facebook. I like the uh, quiz conducted by Kirti. I just wanted to ask you, friends, if you remember this from yesterday. The road to success is our theme, right? 
and very importantly, if we want to arrive at our destinations, we got to drive safely. So what were the cues? Remember, friends, I gave you a mnemonic. I gave you my fingers. If you remember any of you. Number one, if your vehicle is safe, you are safe. If not, you are unsafe, right? Too many passengers, too big a risk. Unsecured loads, unsafe journey, unfit. You remember that? Friends, some ways to remember, like the Shah Rukh Khan story that we just did. Yeah, different ways of learning, different ways of doing things, right? So this is something what we call a mnemonic. I'm sometimes confused with the number of days in the month, you know, and there is a typical nice song uh, in the Shah Rukh Khan style that goes, 30 days has September, April, June and November. It's a S-A-N-J, you can call it also S-A-J-N. All the rest are 31, say February, with 28 days clear and 29 each leap year, right? So I guess this pandemic kind of began on that leap day last year, February 29th last year, and has still not seen any signs of relenting. But I hope all of you are having a lovely interface and enjoying the session. Another nice way of remembering the days of the month, you know, it's something that you have in your hands, all the answers, right? So one of the good techniques that we just learned in the memory game was also how do you label, how do you make things simple, how do you make visual cues, how do you ensure things are done in a simple manner. The most difficult of answers, and I've done this in a session we had by Shiv Khera a long time back, where he asked us to remember a long list of words, and we never thought we could do it, but we were able to crack the entire words in some ways. So it's also about as explained correctly in the game, it's also about connecting, establishing connections. Are you with me, friends? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So welcome to Tarkash day two. Whose name should I put below the uh, balloons? Whose birthday is it today? Any birthday, any celebrations? Yesterday we had two celebrations. Day before we had three, right? If you remember. Any celebrations today? Any occasions? Any special occasions? Anyone from the organizing team? Any birthdays today? Please put your hands up. We wish you and sing your birthday song. Yeah. Okay. So prayers, you all stay well. You know, it's a difficult time in life. You get notifications on Facebook, on LinkedIn, and various uh, you know apps that tells you these guys are celebrating the birthday today, right? Do you all get that? That's notifications, which is a good way to remember occasions. I normally put it on my contact list. Everybody's um, when I put in the name, I put in some personal details and also add in the birthday and perhaps the anniversary. Today, incidentally, when I did look at a couple of names, I pick it, make it a point to try and wish them at some point in the day with a nice visual. And suddenly realized that two of the people were no more. One of them was a good friend of mine from my days in uh, British Petroleum, Krishna Kumar Kairat. He died last year. And another was an industrial hygiene training who came in in Gujarat and came in to uh, help us in our company at Pfizer to do industrial hygiene, Karan Patel. So now it's pretty sad that in the days you're coming, you're seeing a lot of these effects, but you can see the effect of the waves also is very important and you know that it's important to be protected. So I hope all of you stay safe. Yeah. So this also remember from yesterday, um, I'll repeat it again. I hope you're all sitting comfortably working ergonomically while I'm taking the session. I'm also giving a nice back support. I have a desk screen in front of me. I have a desk pad. I have ergonomic mouse and a mouse pad and I got a nice table out there. So I hope all of you are also sitting comfortably and also just staying safe. So beginning with the pause, I'll tell you a story of this was me a very few months ago, right? Uh, any idea where this is from the backdrop? Guys, would you like to take a guess on what is the backdrop? Can anybody make out the tallest building on planet Earth? Yeah, Sir, palace. Yeah, yeah. Palace. The Burj yeah. Khalifa. Absolutely, that's right. The Burj Khalifa. So that thing in the center hmm, about that, uh, there's a heritage museum with all Arabic test in a silver kind of uh, structure next to my uh, forehead, but above that, right at the center uh, is the Burj Khalifa, the tallest structure. On the left is the Emirates stars. 
Yeah, and that's me sitting this is my office and this is right next to the Sheikh Zayed Road in Dubai. So I'll tell you a story and uh, I also appreciated uh, the context and what uh, uh, Mrs. Bhuma Govindan spoke about on where you will be after three years, right? So different question and also, also we discussed this. We talked of uh, decision making in life and also said yesterday that sometimes do not take too many, uh, you know, don't overthink. So the story of how I actually landed up in Dubai. This was in 2003-4 where I had implemented a supply and distribution module at a plant in Mumbai in Patal Ganga in a company called Castrol. So I'll tell you the logic and also tell you how data works. Yeah, it's also about intelligence, intel and analytics and how we make decisions. So my job as the head of the manufacturing in this plant as the, man, the company that manufactured lubricants my job was the first challenge I had was inventory. So my challenge with me was to manage inventory. How do you reduce inventory was the question and how do I ensure that is done was the first challenge. So how do you measure inventory and when do you measure inventory is a bigger question. So inventory is measured and was taken stock was taken at the last day of the month. So the end of the month, if it is September, April, June and November, it's on the OK, you know that 30, 31st of the month, depending on which day of the month it is. So I thought of I thought of a solution. Let's try and ensure that we manufacture and produce exactly the amount of goods that we need to send. So what was done on the last three days of the month, we would try and produce exactly what was supposed to be dispatched. So we had the trucks waiting and would manufacture and produce in barrels, in small packs, you know, uh, I showed you pictures of John Abraham. What was John Abraham all about yesterday? He's a man who, you know, he loved his bike more than his uh, girlfriend. And that's the reason why he uh, lost Pipasha. But also he loved his hair and that's how we got him into a helmet. But he was the brand ambassador for uh, the two wheeler bikes, the two wheeler vehicles. And Raul Dravid, you remember, he's a guy we got him to put in seat belt. And he was the man who also marketed the brand ambassador for our petrol, petrol, petrol engine uh, fuel, petrol engine lubricants. So these are two guys who were brand ambassadors and sold and managed the stuff. But my job was to ensure that whatever it did, end of the month, my stock would be minimal. So we did it on a simple Excel sheet where we monitored the stock and the manufacturing was made to almost fill to the truck. So as the last truck left, the manufacturing pipeline was stopped some steps ahead to ensure that the inventory was zero. So from a stock of some 500, 600 KL at the month end, we had almost nil stock. So we actually had what they call zero balance, zero inventory. Yeah. So simple story, but just to explain to you the fact that you can manage data, but in a sense, you got to keep it simple to understand what is the paradox because it's not about managing inventory just on one particular day of the month. You need to have stocks managed across the uh, you know, perennial inventory that you need to manage. But that's the way you would you know, beat the, uh, that's the method you'd beat, you'd use to beat the approach there. So that's the challenge there. So this particular story goes back to Dubai and while I'll talk of the uh, ergonomics and requirement for you to be safe, uh, I also had an inst interesting story to say if I could recount to begin with. So this was around that time and you see that nowadays that there is a lot of things on the news and I believe that the boys are very interested in sports here and the girls are even more clear. But a lot of sports, what happened in those days was a match between two friendly countries and this was in Dubai in 2003. It was between India and Pakistan. It's a five match series where it was played in a neutral territory. Of course, the first match was won by India. The second match was won by Pakistan. The third match, guess what, was won by India. And the fourth won by Pakistan. So made a very interesting and gripping fifth match. And this fifth match is where we were all watching. This is atop the Sheikh Zayed Road. Uh, the Burj Khalifa wasn't there, but the Emirates Towers was there as an office atop that. And with my colleagues who was interested in a Pakistani company, we watched, we all watched the match very keenly. End of it, what happened? Yes, India won. So we didn't realize that all matches are fixed, that everything is planned, everything is pre-planned. But anyway, the good fun and we went back. Everyone went back to the respective destinations except me. And this was in office actually on a, you know, on the weekend on a Saturday. After some time, uh, my boss called up and said, let's go out for dinner. And I said, yeah, you carry on. I'm not in a mood for food. He said, what happened? 
And then he said, I got a small problem in the back. And then he came up and said, what is the challenge? I gave him my symptoms and he said, I'm getting you an ambulance. I said, what ambulance? Like I mentioned yesterday, I'm a perfectly fit guy. I'll explain you how I manage my fitness. I used to run marathons and stuff. I said, nothing. He said, no, try and do one thing. Where are you? I said, I'm lying on my back. Currently in the way of the uh, Corona, you would always be proning, but lying on my back. He said, can you raise your right leg? I tried and I said, I can't. Then he says, raise your left. And I said, I can't. So that's the problem. You got a problem and I'm going to get you out of it. So came in an ambulance. They went to a hospital. I took an X-ray. I couldn't find much. Then they took the first open MRI and they detected I had a lumbar 4-5 disc prolapse. You know what that means, friends? I had the first version of the slip disc. So that was the interesting experience I had. And they also then went in to analyze what happened. This company was British Petroleum Middle East and they came in to analyze the data and they took the data of my attendance to office on the logins I had on my laptop. So I, I was actually here in the Middle East doing a supply and distribution module. And like I said, I got in here because I'd done it before in my plant that talked about the reduction of inventory in Bombay. And I had some data, I had the books, I had the manuals, and I was the only guy who was able to produce the manuals, paper documents when it's required. And they said, would you like to come into Dubai and do the same? I said, why not? So this is what happened. I landed up there. And then they looked at the data for the last one month when I was in office and uh, the logins on desktops. So while I was doing a conference room pilot, I was actually the master administrator. So I was logging in, logging out, and my since it was easier when you set up, when you log into a system, if you have your own profile login, it's easier to set up the uh, ERP. So I was logging in so many times that they couldn't make sense of what I did, but they realized that I'd hardly left the office, I'd worked too hard, and maybe that was what broke my back. It also is important that they realized the attendance, the card, and how it is. So data is very critical. They did a root cause analysis and finally estimated that perhaps it was non-occupational because uh, you know when you are at your desk, uh, when you are teaching people, you kind of lean forward, standing and teaching people, you're helping them at the keypads. You take very odd poses. Your posture is kind of not so ergonomic. You bend, your torso is kind of bent. So those things really kind of is a challenge. And those days you should have laptop bags with the sling kind of laptop bags where you used to hold it on the side and walk around, which also put a lot of stress on the cranial and the back. So that was an interesting example of what happened in the Middle East. So on this note, I would ask you all to at least relax, uh, take an ergonomic break, move your shoulders right up and down, keep a little bit of uh, breaks of, you know, your eyelids also keep flapping it a couple of minutes uh, to lubricate your senses. So be safe and be comfortable. OK, so with that, I begin my journey. So the context, what's the context out here? It's about data and analytics. You know what happens? Uh, you talked of match fixing and as of today, also there is a lot of stories that's going around on apart from the sandpaper gate about match fixing. It's a lot of data that goes into the immense amount of analytics that goes into the game. I'm not sure any of you watch the IPL uh, either on TV or on Hotstar. It's a lot of analytics that goes in. There's one channel, the dugout, that looks at just data across, you know, which batsman, if Chris Gale is not key, not able to face short bowling, or Suresh Raina has a discomfort with a short pitch ball, they will barrage him with short pitched balls. So that's how it works. That's how data works in the game, in football, in various games, all about data and analytics. So that's the big generation we are in. Boma said correctly that we are on the digital age. You cannot survive without it. So that's the important journey out here. So that's my story in the context and connection with the big data, the data analytics, and of course, the need to make proper decisions. We'll also do a flashback. I also realized that you had questions yesterday end of the session. I think the girls ask most questions than the boys, so we're expecting the boys this time to win. OK, so I also spoke about this day. So this is that day I said advancing wellness. So this is wellness day, this is wellness day. So I hope you all be safe and that's the other connect with wellness. Uh, I also realized that my last speaker was a wellness coach also. So this is dedicated to Buma and Buma, both of you together for making this session so interesting. So I'm presenting a statistic on screen. How can we apply data analytics to life? So is any of you able to see the data in here? What's this graph all about? I'll leave the screen open for a couple of minutes to ask you what is the data? Can you figure out what's the statistics? I told you a story of what happened to me in 2003. Yeah, I had a slip disc after which I was told to reduce weight. 
so this is where i began this journey into analytics on my health so friends what i have on screen here is an excel sheet and this is the data of my parameters across the last 15 16 years so it begins from 2004 and goes on till as we speak uh, the last couple of months so what is this what is the data that i am having out here so this data is all the parameters the critical parameters that affect us yeah what is this the height and weight that gives you the body mass index index you got a standard expectation that a bmi should be less than 25 uh, we also heard that somebody is you know can lose substantial weight you know going from 93 to 63 sounds nice but you shouldn't have such you know fasting and fasting is not good it should be done progressively but also this is the various parameters that you measure you know blood test normally gets you a lot of these so these are the parameters that i have been measuring across the last 15 20 years how does it help i can monitor trends i can make out you know when my sugar level goes up when my cholesterol the fatty acid works out how the triglycerides work i got data on my gall bladder on kidneys on the fatty liver on my blood on my uh, wbc count so on illness uh, and the hbo1c of course the sugar level overall uh, the uh, moving average average uh, blood glucose the bp of course so all these are parameters you know you're looking at data and big data talking of analytics and business intelligence this is something that is very real to us so do you friends also have blood tests uh, do you have data that comes in paper report that comes in the live medical report that you get do you kind of stock it store it how do you monitor it how do you use it yeah so this is a good point and suggestion that try and ensure the data data of your personal life the most critical person in your life yourself try and monitor the data as we speak uh, my wife and uh, son also have shared in google keep a health map of their temperature and their uh, you know spo2 levels because the last couple of days that a cough and cold you can never be too careful so you got to be proactive so this is how you would monitor data friends so on the health front i mean health comes before anything right so please like i said looking at wellness try and see how we can monitor your parameters maintain it in a simple excel sheet maintain it any kind of data form that you want but i'm sure the way you kind of done the conference i know that all of you are good at managing data and analyzing it you'll be able to get a lot of trends uh, there's been friends of mine who had you know i talked to my own slip disk i've had uh, sudden heart attacks they had strokes they need to have you know they had blockages so how are these analyzed how can you find it out maybe a treadmill test and some checks will help you find it out but also about understanding the data and seeing your trends you know all this is coming it tells you the bad news that's anticipated and you can do proactive steps like i've been told to take a blood thinner in anticipation of blockages in my blood streams so that's something that you can do preventive actions so data in that way helps you in really understanding yourself and managing yourself better we spoke about the pandemic friends the report card of the last millennium and you have that also a statistic that is very well documented the h1 n1 and the n2 across the years you can see the trends there you can also estimate and this is the time of the year to look at the performance of the pandemic and you can see that it's been going pretty uh, you know well yeah you also need the cyclicity so the pandemic over the past millennia so you had the big plague in 1720 you had a cholera outbreak in 1820 you had the spanish flu you're aware of that 1918 to 1920 and then you had what's called what some people tend to kind of i think now uh, they have decided and i believe this was decided just a couple of days ago that they will call the uh, virus not by the country of origin yeah the spanish or the chinese will feel pretty bad about their uh, virus they going to call it and not by this numerical name that kind of looks so sounds so difficult the 1.0 is being going to be called like they do the uh, hurricane and the cyclones right that makes it more interesting and there also i feel that most of the cyclones and hurricanes have got names after the uh, females but i guess that's a trend that can be managed but looking at it on this data that we just showed you is the pandemic a risk that we could not have anticipated from the data we saw so the cyclicity to it and like i said yesterday is something that we all could have learned is it something that caught us unprepared how is it that you know they talk of the biggest risks of impact in the uh, 21st century in 2021 2025 they done the projections the pandemic was never in any of those bubbles so how is it this was missed so it's not friends not so much just having the data it's about looking at the data having a feel of the data and making sense of it that's the other important aspect to this a lot of companies had a vision 2020 but nobody ever anticipated the pandemic breakout so that's important that the data what is it telling you is other big thing here 
just a quick uh, recap on the uh, you know what happened this was last year in march when the pandemic was declared so there are phases of the pandemic there's an inter pandemic period there's a pandemic period alert and there's a pandemic period so the who phase is an index used by the world health organization to indicate the level of the virus transmitted the way it's transmitted the transmissibility yeah and p3 indicates that there is very limited human to human transmission and p6 the last stage indicates that there is sustained human to human transmission yeah and that's the reason why we are looking at these just to demystify this this is monitored by the who globally and this is the three phases that we have uh, what does it mean friends uh, i know you kind of know this already but phase one is where there is no animal virus circulating among animals it's not being reported to have reached them phase two is where it is circulated in domesticated and wild animals and is known to cause infections but is possibly considered a pandemic threat phase three is when an animal to or human virus has caused cases or small clusters of diseases in people but not resulted in human to human transmission four is where there is some verified human to human transmissions of an animal or human to animal kind of uh, it is influenza reassorted reassorted virus phase 5 is where there is sustained community level outbreaks okay and phase 6 is when there was a actual community level outbreak in one country or more uh, at least one other country in the in another who region that's the way it is defined you also were last year there's a big discussion on why the pandemic wasn't called out early and that's again the importance of data how the business intelligence behind health is able to be monitored and how you can designate the appropriate pandemic levels and declare this is a global crisis that could have been monitored earlier a lot of countries some countries in a cycle there i think some countries understood it as early as november 2019 i mentioned my story of my journey across the continents and in case on that note if you want inputs on managing businesses and looking at opportunities in uk australia do ping in you have my a uh, linkedin contact uh, so some countries reacted well even as early as the chinese new year that came in early 2020 they had reacted they had done containment they had done various controls and they had stopped travel and they had stop stop schools also so those countries reacted well taiwan and some countries closer to the china border they had a fantastic you know now of course this is another wave coming in even in taiwan but they had no incidents no deaths at all for a streak of over 3 months and how do they attain that by corrected action by looking at the data so this is the other way that we need to en ensure the data is there the cdc is the you know the other uh, the center of disease control they are the people who also monitor the similar data on the health and based on the cases they look at the pre pandemic level and the pandemic level so you can look at the phases there so why am i showing you this charts uh, is it to demystify the corona virus for you maybe not yeah So I have kind of done some research on that, and I'm in touch with uh, a business continuity international doing a paper on that for the pharmaceutical healthcare sector in India. But you can look at the phases there; it's very similar in a sense to that. But whichever way it is, on the x-axis is the intervals of time, and the y-axis is the numbers of cases, be it the flu or the pan or the pandemic. Okay, so that's basically the data, and that's why the data is very real for us. You know, when you look at the people who are affected, this is a very big and very important thing on business intelligence. So once again, to recap, this is where the pandemic period is, and you got to look at the graphs, look at the dashboards, and look at where it's red, and also then what do you do? You also then look at the progress. And currently, like I said, we are in wave two, and I think the country is all about thinking that we are not anticipated wave two. so similar challenge in many of the countries and again why this is just a statistical model made some 20 years ago it comes in waves and it's anticipated it's got to be done in maybe three or four waves so that's the time it will take you know when can you kind of study abroad in the us when will classes be you know no longer online when will be real life all these are questions that this will data analytics will help you understand there and this is the ways would react to various scenarios this is a typical chart there and again importantly remind that don't get complacent with each wave that comes we got to build a resistance you are all young people to so try and ensure that you maintain the uh, and precaution that is necessary okay uh, the virus is also being attacked by various uh, vaccines and there's a lot of data that goes in behind that like i mentioned i had taken my vaccine shot uh, last year uh, in uh, december and i also believe that now uh, they are saying that the vaccine needs a booster dose after 6 months there's so a lot of learning there you can never be too safe never be too complacent and that's the other learning there so that is 
a thing called the monitoring adverse reactions to vaccines, and that is the MARV. That's what they call. So what is an adverse reaction? It's any undesirable event that is associated with the use of drugs, vaccines in humans, uh, where whether or not considered related or occurs in the course of the use of a vaccine or drug in a professional practice. So there could be various symptoms and you must have heard of people who are worried to take the vaccine because they cause it calls for body ache, they cause it causes vomiting, you have fever and nausea. In fact, the very symptoms that is intended to kind of break, it happens there. So this was some what they call the pharmacovigilance data that came in on the COVID vaccine safety. I was into a session the other day you know, looking at the data. I'm not sure you can see it, but this is the typical vaccine that you have from the Johnson & Johnson, the Moderna, the Pfizer, BioNTech. All these are the vaccines that you have. And what you look at, if you can see the statistics, I don't know if you look at it closely, it's actually death as a percentage of total by manufacturer. So this graphs are slightly scary, but it shows that there are people who've taken the vaccine and have adverse effects. You saw the adverse effects that you mentioned there. It was the cough, cold, headache, fever, vomiting, nausea. But this one talks of the deaths by vaccine. So you can see the statistics there and you can see that uh, the j and the single dose, but the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccines, you can see the impact thereof. So it's not to put you over the vaccine. You must go ahead and take it because this is still a speck of the uh, total population and the graphs as a bar graph may not be you know on a comparative scale but also it's interesting that what you can do with you know the intelligence that you have the business intelligence is something that you need to map okay so just to give you a context of bi and give you the other analytics and this is all about data to have a single source of data in india now they started monitoring the adverse effects because of course the database on the number of tests done plus the uh, you know the post vaccination adverse effects is not as well captured uh, and all this is done through apps, uh, through the uh, web platforms, where it's kind of done in a religious way. In some com in some countries, there is a good operational discipline. But again, like the same, so much data is about having a single truth. So we talk of business analytics. That's a support for decision making. It also goes back into talk of the big data nicely. It's also about the small data, the small things. You know, when you put in the inputs, uh, and the input is as good as the output. So you put in junk you'll get out garbage so that's the important other message out here is it looking okay are you understanding this context yeah yes sir and we say that the big uh, you know peak in our uh, covid cases in india they say it's because of two things one is the one fees one says because the kumbh mela the other says it's because of the biggest election across you know the west Bengal and tamil Nadu and Pondicherry and some parts of india okay so this could be possibly there but again you got to have statistics there right what's the importance of herd immunity how do you get there but also statistics is an important tool there so it's also got to be uh, you know the data has got to be also authenticated and you know there are various ways of doing it there are cephalogists who look at exit polls and some of them are based on a sample you know and even the rt pcr test is done in a way that is slightly subjective way of testing a positive or a negative case so you got to understand the data and see how it works and that's important for all of us you know, in whichever field we are, be it commerce or arts or you know whatever the technical field we might be in, data is important for all of us. I spoke a little about health and also the importance of why, and I realized that uh, you know to get to higher studies, maybe the US or Australia, wherever you think, you know a decision could be right or wrong. You also obviously got to look at the consequence. We spoke about it in different contexts yesterday. Uh, you must look at the why, what's the outcome, you know, what is the deliver, what is the end outcome of our decisions and you must try to plan it. Although we said life after three years uh, and three years could be a medium term in the current state of things. But, you know, even if you think that long is good, we even think the coronavirus effect will last for uh, three years. So until then is when we got to think of what the decisions are. So this session is also about decision making. So I thought let you be understand put that as a context. How do you make decisions? The various tools to do that. That's one of the tools are just popping it across. So you also got to understand what are the challenge to define a problem, to measure, collect relevant data. So you can see that the measurement and analysis, analysis of data is the most critical there. So this is a typical methodology that you can call a Six Sigma kind of approach, you might call it. So the you know one you got to define the problem or define what you want to do, what is it that you're planning to collect. Next, you got to analyze the measure the data, collect the relevant data. So before you jump into break any problem or understand the make a decision, try and get all the relevant data about the process, about the problem, and also about the people, of course. Analyze the process to identify the cause and effect. 
So the cause and effect also is very important for us. The relationship between input and output. Now what we do today, friends, the inputs, whatever you learn in this large in these three days of Tarkash is going to help you make some few decisions in future life. So it's not just a feel good kind of platform. It's something where you will really understand, you know, whether you want to be an Eklavi or Arjun, uh, this is something that will get you to where you need to be. So identify the vital few root causes. We spoke about the Pareto yesterday. The Pareto is it's the 80 20 principle. That's uh, you know 20 percent of the uh, causes result in 80 percent of the major effects. So likewise, and also goes after I talked about the question and answer yesterday. You could understand and focus on the critical ones. You can't address everything together. You got to focus on the ones that will help you contribute to your success. So try and make a decision that is focused and of course look at improvement, look at control. So this is the typical DMAC approach that helps you define, measure, analyze, improve and control. Uh, one thought of helping you, you know, the various decision making tools that you can use, but this is one that I just thought let me just talk about it. Six Sigma reduces the levels of, uh, you know, the the smaller, the 99.9 percent .9 accuracy of getting the intended results. This will help you kind of get closer to that. OK. So question for you. So what is the bird asking? Yeah. The answer is kind of tight spot, difficult predicament, quandary, mess, ML fix, big problem, trouble, complication, bad plight. Huh? You can see there's a nice uh, stuff there. So what is this all about? So what's the question? What's the question mark? What is the situation? You can see the hats they're wearing also. Yeah, any guesses? Yeah, how the job market in India? So that's the question there. Yeah, so how does that sound? How the job market in India? So this is all about the biggest decision you're going to make now is about what you're doing currently and what the current decision going to make. How is the job market? So that's the again the biggest challenge you're all facing there. OK. So the job market and I don't know if you can make out the visual there. It's about people applying for jobs. Have a look at the picture once again. This is the kind of situation that you guys uh, you are the uh, you know you can say that you are the uh, coronials. You are graduating in an era where you are you know getting into a tight situation. You don't know what's going to happen. So that is the kind of market you're looking at. Also look at the presentation that talks of the statistics in this box there. Yeah, I'll give you a second to read this. And have a look at this. It's the same data, but presented in a different way. So it's also about a little about presentation, right? It's also about presenting stuff there in a manner that people understand and relate to. OK, so you can see the statistics there and see where the where it's going, right? So this is about the, the different. There's definitely a gap between the skills and employability. I hope you realize that this is uh, a challenge and uh, this is where you're getting into. Don't want to scare you or demotivate you, but this is the reality there that's hitting you. Uh, we spoke about skills yesterday. I also spoke a little bit about the various kinds of skills, including the life skills, right? 90% of the jobs are going to be skill based, right? Let's hear from what the statistics is and let's hear from the market. In India, over 90,000 people have applied for the vacancies, just 62 for government PNs. Just 62 posts for PNs at this UP police technical wing but a massive 93,000 applicants. What's shocking, 3,000 of the applicants are PhD holders. Over 20,000 are postgraduates and another 50,000 are graduates. Way too qualified for a job where the minimum educational qualification required is class five pass and knowing how to ride a bicycle is an essential criteria. Yeah. So how PhDs apply to become pews? That's a big challenge there. Does the next do? issue is how bad is the Does no job just? issue, the lack of jobs. Pranay, I why? think this is a very serious issue. I think this reflects the, the, the problems with our current paradigm that even at 7% growth, um, I think it's whatever the number is, it's not producing the jobs. 25 million uh, people applying for 90,000 uh, railway jobs, and these aren't great railway 25 jobs. 25 million. 25 million applications for 90,000 railway jobs, and these are, you know, those track workers and so on. They, they actually have to work, and and uh, you know that seems to me a reflection of the fact that we really have a jobs problem. Yeah. 
You can see the challenges there. Yeah, that is Raghuram Rajan and he speaks about some of the challenges. So how how do you manage to be that one? How can you stand out of the crowd? That's some of the challenges we face, right? This is one of the things that we always will be worrying about. How do we manage to you know, be that one guy who's ahead of the pack? Yeah, I can relate to that. And we also spoke yesterday and we had, I promise that I'll take a little bit of time to explain and articulate and expand on what we spoke about. It's skills, not degrees that will get you so far. And the skills is largely also about business intelligence. It'll help you make smooth decisions. So while education and skills are the key foundation, elements of our economic growth and powering global partnership. The skill we spoke about is also and this is about you know, typically a career building block. So what's out here? What do you see out here? The guy is going for a job interview and the interviewer is asking the candidate, the aspirant to have a seat. So what does he do? Can you see what's the uh, challenge out there? You know, it's typical like you know having an IKEA kind of product, maybe an IKEA interview perhaps. So he's asked to assemble his own seat. Yeah. So the future is going to be something similar where your career is the building blocks is how you will how will you do that, right? So also important to understand how you know things could be. It you always had somebody to do things for you. And in India, typically a situation where you always have a helping hand. But I guess uh, like I said, I've been uh, marooned, isolated in Australia for six months last year in the pandemic broke out. If out there, everyone does his own job. Nobody comes to fix your window. Nobody comes to repair your boat. As we speak in the window, they got a nice work life balance. End of a weekend, they go boating. Even through the pandemic, they were all surfing. So they do have that work life balance. Well, we tend to kind of go to the other extreme, but this is also importantly, people are very hands on. So while we get you know focused on our academic skills, we also need to have a life skills, manage people and situations. So the challenge is how do we differentiate ourselves? How do we make that break? How do we ensure that we you know, are able to stand out, be that one, you know, the one umbrella? And also I hope you understand why you know, the reflective suits are in a color that's kind of yellow or orange. You know, It should be ensure that you're visible. Children buy this kind of color so that the reflective suits or the jackets or the umbrellas, it's kind of found out so that in an emergency, or if there's a vehicle driving and there's like the cyclone in the last couple of days, if there's a lot of monsoon around the uh, entire atmosphere environment is dark, you will not be missed out. Nobody will hit you by mistake. So that's about keeping yourself you know, visible. I had uh, my first car in life and we spoke about uh, yesterday's session where, where they want a BMW or what. I had a Zen and I had a kind of dark metallic blue kind of shade there, which was pretty nice, beautiful color. My first car and you know what happened? I was driving on a nice night on a Amavasya night and I was hit by a guy who came in who was drunk, but he was driving at a speed of 120 and we were hit in the backside and we went all over. You know, that's the example of why uh, the color of a car also is very important. You've got to be standing out, you've got to be visible. And the guy said that day, I couldn't see you at all on a moonless night. You know, visibility also is important with all the tail lights that you have and the headlights that you have in the weather conditions, like we spoke about the journalist assessment, you got to understand weather conditions, situations and see how well you're able to stand out. OK, this is the important part of how you could differentiate yourself. And there are, like we said, very basic skills required. I'll just recap it for all of us. But what are the skills one should have? One is and importantly for making decisions uh, and data be, you know, important is observation. And the other one apart from observation is research analytics. So these are the two elements that is goes in with both data and intelligence. Yeah, you got to have a sharp sense of observation. All senses, the ears, eyes and you know that's important there and also be able to analyze and research well. Also an outreach. You should be able to reach out and also have business acumen. So these I would add on to what I said about the skills yesterday and connected well with business intelligence where observation, research, outreach and business acumen also key skills friends that all of you should have as you go out into the big bad world. So I'll add this on and like I said, this is where you can make your future, make your career. I'll pause here to help you understand this context. Uh, most of the sessions are recorded, I think, so there's no need to take notes, but I hope you'll be able to see the recording yourself. Uh, understand it, live it, try and see you know, what it all adds up to and where you need to focus on. Also identify and do a SWOT. A SWOT is a strength, weakness, opportunities and threat. 
where you understand what are the strong points, what are your weaknesses. You may not be able to work so much on your weaknesses to convert it to a strength, but try and do that and also try to leverage your strengths. Make that your strong calling card, whatever you do well. In a lot of questions we had, there are people who might not be data oriented. There are people who might be introverted, extroverted. There are people and we had a lot of questions for various people. Uh, the conference self conference. So use that to you know understand yourself. Know thyself is important. Once you know thyself, you'll be able to make a better start and do well. OK. And the other big going to the session very thematically. Are you tech savvy? Yeah, I know all of us are challenged in some ways. I myself uh, introduced Microsoft Teams to my company. This is around three years back. It was it has of course graduated, become more versatile, added in more of uh, you know, elements in that. Uh, and perhaps it was only after February, March last year that people started getting it was getting used well. People are clued on to the effect of that and Microsoft upgrade also happened to make Teams very effective and efficient. Having said that, I also had a challenge yesterday in uh, you know being able to share my screen. I know my previous speaker also initially had a little bit of you know screen share issues. Even in the couple of games you played, you know you have this you know which sessions, how many work sessions you have open. So all of us have the important you know we are not geeks, but we need to learn. You know, be it a mobile phone or whatever it is. I can't I can't say that I am the cat's whiskers on technology. I am not the authority on business intelligence. Also, uh, there is some amount of technology there. I am not the perfect person to speaking on uh, this subject. Actually, as I said, but I know the process, and that's important. That you should be at least knowing the process. When you get any equipment, and I picked up this in a particular platform there in IKEA. So you have a stopwatch, a temperature. You have the uh, you know the clock. And also know that you guys, I, some of the pictures I saw, I was interested in the presentation that you had at the college. I saw some pictures with a nice, beautiful annotation, which had the time, which had the you know time ta of the place, so taken in Dombi Valley, taken in Kalyan. You know, I saw that the occasion, the time, place, the longitude, latitude. So when you look at data, also see how we can simplify and make this you know usable. So there's things called the timestamp camera. Where when you take a picture, you can make an annotation. If I were to go to a place and I want to have a memory, I would like to have all this data. So if you have a simple smartphone, you can have a date or timestamp camera where you can put in the longitude, geotag the pictures, you can put in a comment, the location of the place, where it is, you know. In Dombivli West is where you had this picture. This is a sports ground, there's the canteen. Which day of the month of the year did you take the picture? What's the occasion? What's the time of the day? All these are data that you can pick up, right? A simple picture taken uh, by a phone there is as good as you know anything there. For example, these people are graduating. This is the class of 2021 SIA College Higher Education. So it's important to tag the pictures to ensure that it's date stamped. So try and see if you can use, you know, like make the data stronger. So what else do we have? I shared a couple of uh, op uh, opportunities of how we can leverage the skills. What are the other parameters? What are the tricks of the trade? What else can we do, friends? So it's also like I said, think of the others. You know, it's not just about ourselves, but the important other piece in the puzzle is a contribution to society. You know, doing some things for others. And you see a lot of you uh, when you look at your profile. And uh, like I mentioned, I've been interviewing for uh, the Bitsom the last few months. I think a lot of the social responsibility and what people have done in the pandemic, the way the outreach has been makes some candidates that's the game changer that's a differentiator so try and see how we can do things in other ways you can't physically go out and do it's not about contribution it's not about checkbook charity try and do stuff that will help you you know make yourself employable improve the gaps and the mitigation you could think of so try and make yourself you know manner make yourself a complete person you might not be 100 percent in all those aspects but the 10 10 10 percent that you have in that eight ten parameters you looked at Try and work on all of these and that will make you a complete balanced uh, candidate there in the job market and the deficit that we have on employability. Try and see how that can be done well. OK, uh, and I said you can't be a I'm not the master of all trades. I'm not even the jack of all. And this is a story of how you know mother kind of. Fart the up the electric engineering degree. Why? Why a fan repair repair. Yeah. So I don't know what streams you are into, but if there's electrical engineer somewhere in your midst, somewhere in your friends, you know, I think once he graduates, he comes back, Magna Cum Laude, and he says, I got this, I got a gold medal, and he says, can you repair the fan? And he says, you can't. So typically as an engineer, the mechanical engineer, civil engineer, you know, the getting into the plumbing of the house and solving the problems, that's a difficult challenge. 
one of the things I've seen are a lot of CVs across the last uh, three months is a lot of people have learned cooking, you know, cooking skills, culinary skills. I shared my experience when I got engaged in watching MasterChef. It's the only program that the entire family watches together. My uh, mother, my wife, my children, and my dog, family dog, all of them watch this. So it's also about picking up some skills, whatever it is, as Buma said, try and see what is it that you can leverage. Uh, question that I asked yesterday, uh, what should I learn? Pick up whatever interests you and try and work with it, and also try and be hands-on. If you really want to get into Australia, learn to manage your own you know, household chores and try and do your stuff yourself, okay? The challenge we have, friends, and again, let's come back to uh, what we do. And the, you can sit on the desk table with your MacBook or your laptop all day. You can have a steady job or you can have a fast track career. I think there are people who have different attributes. You can do things differently, but it's also about you know what you want in life. It's about managing and making a lot of moolah or is it about collecting experience? So this, is a, this again comes back to what we need and what we need to uh, gain from the outcome of that. And obviously, at the end of the day, you've got to fill the gaps by skilling. You've got to the deficit of whatever is there, the skill deficit is what you need to be putting that plank across and walking the plank carefully, safely. Yeah. And you obviously got to uh, see in the uh, academic part of you, the education research industry gap is the one that's got to be balanced, be it education, research industry, work with academics, do internships. As we said, learn, you know, take stuff, write papers, do blogs. Uh, one of the uh, last students I interviewed spoke about you know, writing a uh, interning and with a newspaper and writing articles, doing the beat on crime and doing a beat on business and seeing how different each session is and how different hats you wear, what different, you know, how you are act differently. So this is important here. Uh, even if some of you get into higher education, the faculty time is limited. The training might be virtual, it will be different, but then that's where you got to be looking at how you manage stuff here. So this is how you got to also, you got to ensure that Whatever it may sound daunting, may seem impossible, but until it's done. So until you get done, it's all kind of the happy ending is when all that happens bit back. Okay. So you've got to fill in the gaps. You've got to put eat things carefully. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. Each of these, I assure you, friends, will fit nicely in place. And of course, the uh, importance is for this all to be balanced in here. Okay. So on the expectation from BI and all, so I think this is simple things that all of you have been through, uh, but and we spoke about this yesterday and I know that a couple of days you're talking of these, how to build in a LinkedIn profile also is what I think you've been advised in the uh, last couple of sessions. You're doing it, but try and use each of the platform to build your personality, engage with people also relating to the question yesterday to answer that try and get into groups, lots of groups that you might be familiar with, get to into participation. The post should be relevant. LinkedIn also got to be tagged well. You got to ensure that you do it well. So look at it. Take a snapshot of a LinkedIn page and see what it looks like and see if that attracts. You can tag it if people are able to connect with it. Is the picture appropriate? Uh, is the text, is the gap, is your designation or the title, is the college, is the college details there, is the link appropriately posted? Is that kind of getting through? And also, like this guy, uh, part of the English, but he's spoken about a guy from UP. He's spoken about his focus there. You can see that in the one year of experience he's done, material management, warehouse management, cold chain, inventory control, procurement, key account management, complaints management, customer relations management, management of manpower, continuous improvement, forecast inventory levels. Look at that now. In one year, the guy who's done so much, I also, the reason why I ran you through my three mistakes in my life is, you also got to change hats in what you do. And the change hats is not just about changing jobs, changing roles, changing companies. Uh, yes, three years uh, is, you know, yesterday also we heard that, uh, you know, when you talk of a long term job, nobody stays longer now than in the earlier days. 10 years was a minimum you stay in a job. In a government job, you stay all life. But uh, two, two, three years. But these are the things you can pick up. So even in various roles, you get internships. Try and see how we can harness, you know, leverage the skills. Try and put the data in a manner that looks, you know, the most important decision is going to be made by whom? The person who looks at your LinkedIn account, the person who looks at your CV, and the decision they make will be whether to call you for the interview or not. So you'll either be screened out or you will be called in. So this is important in the way uh, decisions are made and it's all based on the data that you project. Try and get in to do it well here. OK, and also on this uh, platforms, your follower is not always your fans. So look at who are the guys who tag you, what you want, see how you, who's the target audience, who are the people you want to impress, 
you know, who, if you want to set up a garment manufacturing company or you want to kind of get into, you know, publicizing something, who's your audience? There's a lot of, uh, you know, on Facebook and in the meet social media, there's a lot of ways by which you can identify your target audience by tag words, you know, what's tag words? If you want to sell, uh, you know, Harsh, if you want to sell something to a uh, Gujarati, you would use the keywords come on Dukla to mind of kind of get him salivating. So that's the kind of thing you would use to really get people to be engaged, to connect. It's also about connecting. Yeah, so that's the other important learning here. Credentials can get you a dream job. So whatever it is, be it the trade, see it commerce or arts or science or engineering, try and see what credentials they can build up. Uh, try and build in a credibility, testimonials, endorsements, word of mouth. These are effective ways of increasing credibility. Uh, word of mouth is the best way, like I said, getting a new job is more by a reference, so that try and use that. Uh, we spoke about this yesterday. I'm hopping on it because I said I would connect on this. This is a longer session, although I think I'm still running short of time. But important to also understand that a word of mouth reference, a good name that you create can go down in a second. So try and ensure that the character that you have, the SIA College of Higher Education, remember that you are the person who's coming from there. Anything that goes out in the word of mouth or public media, social media, try and ensure that you don't in any way uh, do anything except increase the levels of credibility of the college, increase the repetition of the school. Do not do not do anything that will affect your credibility because if one person kind of has something that goes against it, the entire college is tainted. OK, so when you get to the industry, whose fault is it anyway? Between the academy and industry, there's always a challenge there. But the SI college and whichever company you get into, so if you don't prepare, whose fault is it? There's always a finger pointing right between each of that. But again, it's got to be a combination. The, the academy and industry, the student come together and that's importantly a win win support there. Uh, there's a gap there, but you also got to be a Hercules to really be professional and try and take up courses. There are a lot of places you can learn Coursera. You can take up courses, try and see and pick up certifications that are logical. Try and build in a have a three year plan. I think just to take on from um, uh, Mrs. Buma Govindan session. Try and have a plan, have a professional development plan on where you see yourself three years from now. What are the skills that position will entail and what do you need to get there and take those actions, put the steps in, you'll get there into that. OK, and also kind of look at every opportunity. Anybody who helps take the chances. Yeah, this is the typical way the wheel was invented to have been invented earlier. Uh, and you cannot be too busy to realize that there is somebody who's offering you some help. So don't kind of be too complacent and don't kind of think. Let not ego get in the way. Take all the support you can. I have got, you know, help comes in at the right. It could be opportunity knocking at your door. Don't mess it up. Don't miss it out. OK, employers find difficulty in retaining employees. Why? There is three generations, I'll say. Let's kind of summarize. The first generation of the one typically which had less opportunities. They need it for the sake of survival. There is more work, less pay, typical kind of jobs you spoke about. And in like in the public sectors, government jobs, you stayed long life or in banks, no change in jobs. Whatever the loyalty was there was there. Second generation, of course, the IT companies, better salaries. Of course, you get into this, uh, the uh, loop of the EMIs. You have a loan for the education, vehicle, home, etc. You change jobs frequently. You would have less loyalty. Yeah, so you would be kind of flitting like a butterfly between a one job to the another. Talking of typically the tech companies between the Deloitte and the kind of uh, place you would. And that's where the big gap comes in for the two generations. Third generation, of course, and this is where it comes through. This is social generation, friends. All of us are living in the digital era. Uh, we had a couple of sessions for your students. We said that IT coding is free. The zero core we spoke about, super 100. And we had 100 plus 100, 200 of the students attending it. Improves the quality of life, opens up more career options, makes it a better workplace, gives you more roles more learning opportunities and rewards. So that's the reason why digital is in and that's the reason why this generation is so different and that's why the social media also needs to be leveraged there. OK, so that's the big connector between the generations also. So that's the first, second and third. If we are living in a time where you're locked in with parents, grandparents perhaps, so important to also realize that we need to connect better and see what works best for our generation. So business intelligence has a lot of you know, elements to it. It is very useful, obviously. It can improve the strategy. It depends a lot on the input that goes in, on the data that comes in. It's the raw data that needs to be extracted, needs to be transformed, needs to be loaded. This goes into a notional data warehouse, and this helps you predict. What does it predict? 
it predicts future customer behavior. If you notice, if you do a like or visit a page, uh, you know, you'll suddenly start getting customized prompts, be it from your uh, Google Maps, locations, Facebooks. Uh, if you have a coffee at a place or you search a coffee, you'll get, you know, offers to have a coffee, a good restaurant around you that serves good coffee and a conversation thereof. So this is where the data goes in. The data that comes in and you've seen the entire trends there, all the things that we do on the internet is being watched. There's somebody who's using the data. Nothing is free. Most of the things, the platforms you're in, even the OTT platforms, all of them are using you. That's the data mining. They're using you to data mine your whatever you're doing, your preferences, your choices, your searches, all that kind of is what helps to predict future customer behavior. So there's a graph that they plot and look at how you can, you know, they'll forecast what you plan to do, what you will do. It's like a game of chess where, you know, you are the king there in that game and everyone's watching out of the queen and you are the person people are looking at for what is the next step. So what the move you make is what is being looked at everywhere. Uh, the strategy obviously is to improve and correct there. There is, you know, there is the, like I said, the decision making support that we get this way or that way also will be decided by the data that comes in there. And you can run a lot of queries, you can do a lot of reporting, you can look at patterns, you can understand you know, what the data throws you, you can get a lot of graphical interpretation. So this is the opportunities, the codes that you have are the ones that you can help in data mining. You can search for patterns, you can look how people will behave, you know, and can be useful also. We speak about in the I mean talk of the pandemic or talking the way the people make decisions. This is the heart of what they do, right? And you also got to deepify the data, right? So this is also no, you also have to understand it. A lot of us look at dashboards. What does the data say, right? You can crack these all, and it's not just about remembering, but also about understanding them. You know, what's the parameters? What is it need to project? If you make a report in whatever the fields you get into friends, you got to understand what is the outputs, how do you track the parameters, the key performance indicators, and also try and relate to them. Some of you might get into you know jobs which need you to play with data, but you also even if you are an analyst, you got to understand data and correct with them. You got to relate to them. Yeah, it's not just about presenting the data; it's also got to be understood. And that's why it's important to demystify the data. So a lot of business intelligence strategies, but what are the elements of it? Just to kind of uh, put it across, the business performance management is the heart of it. It also supports it supports the business performance. It manages the data. It does the governance of the data. There is a business intelligence program that works of it, and I'll give you a couple of examples just to give you a feel of what it is. And it's mobile, use, usually mobile enabled and based on apps. There's a big data architecture based on various platforms. There is warehousing and this data integration. And there's the various options of how you could use the strategies, the SAP, the Oracles, the Clicks, the Tableaus. All these are uh, analytical platforms which you could use, something that's uh, uh, to help you support your business. You've got to choose them as appropriate. Power BI is very versatile. It can give you a lot of, uh, you know, the way data is. Lots of benefits of uh, BI, of course. It keeps you updated, helps improving the customer support, superior information exchange. It increases enhances productivity, value added information tracking, improved information consolidation. It has greater operational insight, the reduced admin cost, the high performance, there's a scalability. You can scale it up. You can start with one location and mul multiple locations, maybe across various streams. The analytics are very powerful. It also integrates with other technologies. There's interoperability that's there. So it's consistent in the user friendly format. It's flexible, easy to use and serves various business functions. So the models for various supply and distribution, quality, various functions, finance, of course, are the integrated model. All of these are kind of could be connected and this is how it helps. So lots of benefits of BI definitely. And you know, there are advantages of relevant and accurate reporting. There are key insights you get. You're all also going to be staying ahead of the game. There's a quality of accurate data. There's improved uh, growth patterns. There's efficiency and accuracy, faster decision making. In a sense, how does this help? We spoke the other day about you know how you need to lead rather than lag. So how does business intelligence help, friends? So this you know the typical what we spoke about. Would you need to lead or lag? In a sense, you wait for something to hit you and then react. I mean, is there a cyclone coming? And you kind of then open up and decide what to do, take precautions, stock up. Is there a pandemic lockdown coming in? Then you kind of stock in the medicines, right? You do that with some advanced warning, right? So it's also important to be proactive. So this is the lead indicators. Uh, you know, when you start getting a little bit of symptoms that you're not well, your body gives you, uh, you know, inputs, insights. It gives you, it throws up in a fever or a body ache or a, or a headache. 
like i said there is a data and i shared my health chart with you friends how does that add up here the health chart is what happens what's happened across the last few days months years so all that kind of points to what can happen in the future so the data the business entities the way it will help you if you're able to understand the data collect the data uh, you can move from being you know reactive reactive is you have a heart attack go back and have a you know heart transplant or you have a, a kind of uh, operation that kind of block remove your blocks okay uh, but if you were to be proactive you'd look at the data go for a checkup uh, go for a complete medical assessment do a treadmill test analyze it uh, do your angiogram and stuff and be ahead of the game so that's about being proactive but also about data it needs how do you stay ahead of the game it is also something that helps you predict it helps you predict what can happen good bad or ugly your heart failure or a business breakdown or a cyclone coming or a pandemic wave three this helps you be predictive and therefore by being predictive business intelligence ensures that it is also taking care of some preventive actions the steps you take i'm like i mentioned i take uh, i take a medicine to help me dissipate my blood clots so it i am taking preventive pills that way so these are the ways that the business intelligence tools could help you really gain some advantage there okay so moving from a uh, reactive to a proactive to a predictive to a preventive preventative or preventive culture that's what we want to get into be it on health be it on adverse uh, outcomes be it on uh, business uh, even a business if you look at the trends uh, we spoke yesterday about you know a startup one of the friends asked about a startup so like uh, we spoke about i quoted hari menon in the big basket and said don't get too emotionally attached to what you're doing so the hat you need to wear we spoke about these six thinking hats the white hat is the one you need to look at the information so while your heart and the gut tells you that this is what you want to do the data the information is what should define your actions so look at that and try and look at data from that point of view that's what is the best way to leverage this is intelligence so in terms of capability versus value uh, on the kind of parameters there uh, this is just a context for any of you who will get into this field i know it's not related to what some of you will do but the value score on the y and the capability score on the uh, x gives you these opportunities so w click sense power bi are kind of there in that quadrant or the masters contenders space setters the leaders that's where they are just to give you a flavor of the names that you can look out when you look at bi and the uh, you know options there it's something that you will get to understand beat uh, better look at the different shade before you take decisions but these are the opportunities and that you will have in the future so in the good old days you had the gurugul system right that's how education wide was passed on this information came in the internet boom came in google auto came in evolving risk and skills aspiration challenges of today the camera used earlier is now outdated the walkman nokia the one that shows you know how small and smaller things get the top 100 companies have kind of changed jack welch's industry is history you know what a car elon musk is in bmw is out the uber and all are big disruptors so therefore you need to set the stage by getting basic education as the key to the foundation build a structure brick by brick continuously learn enhance your skills and ensure that digital is something that you do here like i said you no longer kind of go around with the camera some people still do you would use a mobile phone to use the camera you use it as a camera right the walkman is kind of gone the ipod that we used to have is gone so how does you know a good company or a good talk of a company talk of yourself you know what to be a differentiator the way that you know an electric car or a space trip people can kind of make a trip and come in as elon musk says look at out of the box thinking look at creativity look at uh, you know lateral thinking try and think of out of the box options don't be the typical you know can be another thing is wrong with being the typical gisa pita ideas but try and see something it's all about being in that blue ocean strategy try and swim in a different ocean try and so there'll be less competition there and the startup advantage if you get into a space where nobody else has been there before or you can do it differently you can leverage your technology differently you can be different okay so a typical platform there would be virtual assistant there would be this is a you know just a snapshot of what all you might have a typical you know a pi platform would have a virtual assistant would have a cloud based software comprehensive best practice workflows it's all about workflows the various modules that come in and you will obviously be able to uh, engage and empower various stakeholders with real time analytics and dashboards there okay so this is what you would come through so these could be mobile enabled you could have apps there you would have it on a smartphone you could also have it connected to the tablet there would be a virtual assistant 
Telby Analytics could be powered by any of the BI tools and the user connect in app collaborations. And that's how we'll be able to leverage BI. Just example of a typical, a typical thing. Advanced technology on digital is defined by all these collaboration text, the connected text, the IoT, the Internet of Things, uh, uh, the virtual assistants, uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, all these are terms augmented and virtual reality, learning management systems, image recognitions, all these make things very simple. QR codes, you know, typically when you are able to do this, uh, you can log things and manage data very easily. You really get into the league where you kind of, you know, the, you know what's happening anywhere across the world. You can, uh, you know, really uh, I was running uh, a module the other day where I can see a company uh, where there's people uh, so you're fighting the pandemics. How do people wear, you know, Bluetooth enabled devices, BES that you call it, where they wear them when they come into a factory or an office and uh, the various zones where they're supposed to go or not go. If there's a person who's detected positive, if it's a working space or a particular section, you'd be able to find out whom he or she has been in contact with across the last few weeks, months. You can throw out the data the degree of contact, the extent of time that they spent together, has the person been into zones, spent too much time in the canteen, you know, all that things can be kind of now available at the click of a button, seen in real time and monitored wherever you are. So this is where technology and the digital information can really help you really go spaces there. You have growing demands, of course, currently the virtual demand. Eric Sarr, raise the kids is what you would say. You'd expect that this be done virtually rather than parenting. It's a complex art, you know, one day you'll also get around to it. But there's growing demand and expectations on digital as we speak. OK, and there is uh, I will kind of summarize this through various uh, give you a kind of flavor. We spoke about the PLC and the way the you know chip has kind of we somebody spoke yesterday. Ramesh spoke about the Fortran and the way he done his earlier stuff in the oil and gas. There are cheaper platforms from the disk that's come in. It's kind of now, you know, smaller and smaller is going. The algorithms have grown more and more sophisticated. Uh, from the earlier computer, the computational power has kind of gone a long distance there. The flow of data uh, from the demographics to the uh, call center to the tel companies, the web data, social media, and the sensors, it's all very well flowing. These are four forces that drive advanced analytics friends. Yeah, the flow of data, cheaper and sophisticated, smaller storage of options, high capacity in a particular stick, in a chip, you can have so much of information. Like I mentioned, if I have a chip when I come into the facility, I can be monitored for everything I do. Uh, my parameters, my health, also my BMI, my uh, temperature, all that can be recorded. So you don't need to have a temperature scan when you enter the facility. You'll have it recorded. You'll have it with you real time. You'll have your 24 by 7 log of your parameters, vital parameters, including perhaps your SPO2 levels, all that you want to look at. So I spoke about the data on my health that is dated. I've done it in an old fashion. I can result in, I can learn something from it. I can, when I go to a doctor, I give him my health charts. This is my trend in the last. 20 years now tell me what's wrong with me, which is useful for the doctor, for the physician to analyze it. Nowadays, it's all about teleconsultation that no doctor wants to see a patient physically. This data is very useful there, but this also is real time. This is data that is real time because what happened in 2005 and 10 is history. What was the temperature the other day? What was my pulse in the morning? Those are the critical ones. This is where sophisticated algorithms, the power of computing really helps you. This is the forces that drive advanced analytics. So how can you really use a leverage advanced analytics? So you have the commercial drivers. You can use assortment optimization. You can cross upsell. You can use various uh, dynamic op opportunities to do pricing. The business, the business, the business, the customer, the way you want to do it. Uh, managing the yield, the marketing mix optimization. You could also do, use this for sales area planning. And like I said, use it for predictive maintenance. Use it for call center routing. Supported design forecasting, demand forecasting. So today, uh, forecasting is pretty bad. You don't know what you're going to need tomorrow. If there's a curfew and a lockdown in Maharashtra uh, until the end of the month, when you know that today, what is it that you will need? You know, how much of what you need, the groceries, bread, butter, jam, how much do you need? How do you have to forecast that this one helps you demand forecast for, you know, even for example, even a car that you might want to buy. I was in a company like I mentioned where we used to be able to forecast the quantity of paint that would sell. You know, would have all the festivals, the festivals that take a lot of paints. Every house, her ghar pe, diwali pe, they kind of do the painting. So you know the context, what what shade will go in the times of the Ramadan, if people is in paint, what are the color of shade that will be used, the greens, the blues, the reds, all that can be used in demand forecasting. So sitting on May 19th, 2021, I can predict what will be the requirement in 
April 2022. So that's how demand forecasting helps. Again, working on data helps in detection of frauds, thefts, helps in you know bad debt prediction. Obviously, a good supply chain and HR kind of platform. Uh, we spoke about how we can use it for people. So workforce planning also can be well done there. Capital and operational expenses means capital expenses, the ones that kind of goes into fixed costs. Operational expenses are what goes into annual year or year month on month expenses. So this is the how you would leverage advanced analytics examples of how you would use it. Happy to explain more if you have any questions, but this is largely about how we'd get into functional roles, how we'd be able to use the sales, marketing, supply chain, planning, people, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, and also help you and understand what you do. Okay. And the they call it the ADQ, the analytics of digital quotient is used to measure the dimensions. This is a framework for measuring and uh, describing measuring foundations. It's the strategy uh, that's about the disruption awareness. It spoke about the blue ocean strategy, how you can disrupt. You also got to be bold, build a long term orientation. You got to link with the business strategy. So what is material to you? You got to look at it. What is most important? What a customer wants? So whatever you do in your future life is also an uh, is also dependent extremely on what a customer want. So something that somebody wants, including your family, if somebody wants something, if you want the chapati and you get a puri, okay? So that's how you would also, what's the customer needs, what's the expectations, you've got to be customer focused, all that you do, that's the strategy. End of the day, if you're not able to cater to the customer needs, you will not be relevant, your market will be gone. As a startup, you've got to understand who's your key customer, and then you've got to deliver to that, okay? You can also use step out opportunities on capabilities, digital marketing. Uh, I think in a lot of ways now, the way you used to do the selling in a train or in a kind of uh, typical shop on the streets, you would now is now given range to digital marketing. Digital marketing using social media can improve sales. You can get lakhs of sales done overnight. Also, a good campaign can work well. A bad campaign can kind of fall flat. Uh, we speak also about the customer experience when you walk into a particular shop, you go to a Titan store, why is it you want to buy a Titan or why do you want to buy a Tanishk? So it's also about the customer experience, the feel that you get, the kind of homely experience, the cleanliness, the kind of aesthetics that you connect with it. And then of course the data, the models and tools and the value assurance also is built into the capabilities. On the organ structure, it's also about the organization, critical bridging roles, who are the roles, who do various things, the analytics and digital content, also digital literacy and Governance is the way that organization is, you know, uh, done. We spoke about one of the taglines maximum, you know, it's about the governance you would want to kind of get into that. So it's about maximizing your opportunities to deliver better. Use governance to the aspect that's relevant. It's got to be good governance in building in key data. Uh, culture goes back to the skills and this is what you look at. If you want to get into a digital platform or you will all need to use the uh, BI in some way, in some form, trust me. Speed and agility, uh, what was used in the past may not work in the future. Try and think ahead, test and learn all your hypotheses. Have a good risk appetite. Yeah, so always we always will be comfortable in where we are. You know, a ship in the ocean is pretty safe, but that's not what ships are for. It has to cross this waste canal also. It has to kind of go across, take risks. So you've got to have a risk appetite to do different things and also do it differently. An internal collaboration with an orientation towards I mean, good teamwork is good, like you speak, said, but also an external orientation. We tend to look inside out, try and also get it outside in. End of the day, be data driven. So these are some of the ADQs that you'd like to look at. These dimensions help you, you know, measure the frameworks measuring dimensions there. Hope this helps. And an integrated approach to delivering a BI. Uh, it's about you know, the way you do the roadmap, the way you look at the people, data technology, uh, build and scale up based on cases that you do, do a pilot, do a testing, you know, do a POV as a point of view kind of do cases and then do adoption, do a pilot and then do a transition. So typically where you would implement a, uh, any kind of uh, BI kind of platform there. So the common challenges is again, it's also about learnings that I spoke about yesterday in industry, but on business intelligence decision making, the value is the end to end anchor. It's not an afterthought. The value that you deliver through any product or any service is an end to end anchor. Yeah, it is something that goes in throughout. It is not something you think of it. Up kya karenge? Ye ban gaya, abhi kya karenge? I spoke about the three and post it. It's sometimes innovation happens that way, but value has to be driven from design. Okay. It's about actions, not just insights. So good ideas. You may have a lot of good ideas. You may say from Tarkash, I've got so many ideas, but what are the actions? You've got to put this into actions and don't leave it at the pilot, scale it up. 
a lot of things will, you know, well begun is half done, as we said, but try and scale it up, get it to the end point, make that happy ending as we speak in the typical uh, uh, language of Bollywood movies. Unlike the Radhe, try and scale it up. Use people, not technology. Uh, ensure the leadership is aligned. Don't just look at some people down the line at the functional experts, try and get that. The guardrails for data related risks is also data privacy. Look at cyber security. So those are the common challenges for data uh, management. Uh, decisions to be made from these and it requires all of us to think in different ways. So cloud is a new normal. Everything's at the cloud. A differentiator for any you know, platform that supplies uh, modules is got to be the cloud. Full scale automation and it's not dependent on anybody anywhere, anytime, any device. Yeah, it can't be limited to just a laptop or a computer that is there. It has to give you next generation analytics. There's got to be uh, a very agile culture that you need to look at microservices. This is the important thing where you need to look at things differently. OK, and again, just to kind of close out the 10 shifts to help us get to these transformations, uh, customer and user journey digitalization. You got to get them the digital era. You got to have cognitive process automation. You looked at I was in Dubai where they're doing the export 2020. There is so much of con cognitive processes that is automated, your sensors, your perceptions, including driverless cars, people who drive cars, how they can avoid accidents. A lot of digital derivative products and services. AI is built in and built out also. There is uh, application rationalization, there is core system renewal, there is secure cloud-based infra and integrated ways of working, which is very agile, ecosystems and partnerships and the perpetual evolution of the architecture management of the stuff here. So digitizing the business, modernizing the information technology estate and accelerating delivery are the two calls if you need to get into the transformations of BI here, okay? So at the end, are you more of a nerd, a geek or a doc? So what are we? I hope this kind of gave you some context some of them must have been over the top. Some of it even I might not be able to figure out a fathom to the depth that a typical data analyst or a BI, an IT lead would do. But whatever it is, you got to be aware of these terms. You got to be knowing, you got to be in the know. So the end, happy to take your questions. I hope this session gave you a little bit of context and connection from where we started yesterday to the question that you asked to be promised to come back and see what are the typical skills in the digital world that you could use to leverage to harness your potentials, the ways you'd be able to use the platform, the social corrects, the uh, multimedia, the uh, LinkedIn, and the opportunities you get to use. I hope all of these will help you make this better. So friends, uh, this is the time when I say pause. It's 1245 plus, and I hope 1256 now. I think 10 minutes over time. So happy to take questions, friends. Thank you, Thank you sir. sir. Now the now session, the session is, is open, open for, for question, question and, and answer. answer. I invite Saishri Ma'am and Pranjali Ma'am to take over the question and answer session. Yes, thank you, Harsh. Thank you, Dr. Harsh. Thank you, Dr. Harsh. Thank you, Dr. Harsh. Students really would have learned a lot about data, its importance, its analysis, and what can't be achieved when data is properly monitored and checked on. Like, you know, it's an AP and exploratory part of it. I also take the support of some real techie guys on the chat to help me answer the questions. I welcome uh, some people who supported you in this journey. I think some of you are uh, part of uh, orientation session on digital, uh, including coding and zero coding. Invite uh, also them on the call. Madhu, happy to have you on the call. Thanks for the supports and your interface through zero code to get the students aligned to the expectations in the job market on digital. Now it's a tough session. Uh, some of it must be going over the head, but like I said, it's important to understand the process of what you do. Yeah. Students, put your questions in the QA session. As a context also uh, for all of you, we're trying to help you 
connect and give you some free insights. Uh, we spoke about XLR and data analytics. We'll try and see how we can leverage various uh, tech to help you get more context. A demo as we did last week, something that might help you more. We try and see how we can do it for ECR College. Uh, sir? Yeah. Uh, good afternoon. This is Guma here, the site. Yeah. Uh, some questions probably I also felt uh, uh, some of the things the students would take little time to process. Yeah, so yeah. I thought I will ask few questions maybe that may help them to uh, channelize their thinking. Sure. Sir, one uh, one of the key question is like when we are talking about uh, business intelligence and uh, uh, analytics as a choice, like is it mandatory they should have some uh, mathematical or statistical background only then will they be able to pursue this this is the first thing not really not really Boomer. i think uh, you know one is definitely not having uh, the uh, qualifications anybody like we spoke in the last couple of sessions we had for the students the 360 students there is that it's all about a frame of mind. It's all about your ability to analyze. Uh, it's about data that you can think and relate to. People look at it differently. Uh, you must have seen the typical video the last time of a cat using data analytics to you know, jump across and still falls flat. So use data appropriately is what I would say. Uh, no technical qualifications required. We also spoke about the other platform where coding is not the critical element. Some people think that coding is the only way you need to learn on the codes. The white hat juniors and the bajus are the way it is, but mm, I'm not sure that is the required thing. Anybody who's uh, able to have understanding, it's all about processes. Like I said, it's all about managing understanding processes. Buma. So if you're able to understand that, I'm sure everyone is good. In my life, I also say that across my journey in time, this me on the left and me on the right, I can't say I'm be the subject matter expert on anything. I would not be the master of most of the fields that are spoken about. I'm saying it very candidly, neither on business intelligence nor on, you know, uh, even the decision making, like I said, it's happened. It's uh, it's been a kind of it's, it's flown through the karmic connect. Uh, so it is uh, not something that is uh, be the right place and the right time is important there. But also realize uh, you have heard that story. Who would my cheese? You got to realize that things are changing. The world is changing. So it's important for us to also be aware of that. So awareness Situational awareness is the most thing. Be aware of the environment around us. That is more important there. The data, the analytics, there are lots of platforms and tools and so many of the BI uh, tools that are showed. All of that will do the work for you. Yep. Even if you have the basic understanding of what it is, I think it's fine. Uh, sir, my next thing, uh, again, my next question to you in this regard would be, uh, you have presented it so beautifully, like uh, the functional areas where uh, business intelligence is going to be applied and then the various technology that is available. Now we have a profile of students from BCom, BMS, BAF and uh, BI. How far uh, they are going to be involved in these areas, these functional areas and uh, if they are going to be involved among the technologies that you have presented here, what is that they should pursue at least? Okay, I think this uh, is a good question. What does it take to each each domain has a specific functional expertise. Uh, a data analyst, for example, is a, is a person who will look at all the data regardless of which function it is from and be able to do whatever he does, do some magic with it and get some outputs, present some dashboards. That's as simple as you know, put in an input there, plug it in and play as simple as that. But my take is for whatever the fields the students are in and the reason why I give the examples I did is you know, you could use different um, approaches to manage the data, uh, but you should be able to understand what to use. So I have what are the weapons that I have to use. Uh, if I'm aware of that, I would use the right one at the right time. So I think the, all the students, regardless of which function they're in, what they graduate into, will need to be leveraging the data extremely well. Uh, you know, if you look at this time of the year, April and May is when people do performance management, where, you know, the uh, employees across the globe, they get the rewards, recognition, promotions. How do they do that? It's based on data. Where the data come from? It comes from some platform, some learning tool, some learning management system, some kind of training, development, some kind of uh, chart, some kind of targets that take in the performance, month on month, how it is tracked. So all these, in essence, will be applicable to all of us. 
uh, even at the college as we do placements, we also be looking at the data there and be able to leverage it well. So uh, for me also, I'll say that I might not be an expert on, uh, I've worn various hats. I see one hat out here. I've been in construction, I've been in technology, I've been in operations, I've been in offices, I've been in facilities. I also put roles in quality, safety, sustainability, operations, technology, tech transfer, uh, injury procurement kind of space of uh, maintenance. I also been an HR head in my life. So all these kind of how can one flip as you know, whatever your core competency is, how can you do things? Is it impossible? I think it's not impossible. As long as you understand the processes, manage people, uh, the techie kind of nature of what I showed you should not be in any way difficult for any student from SIA to get into. Uh, what is the route to get there? Yes, you know, all roads lead to Rome. Uh, and I guess things will fall in place step by step for each of you. Trust me, you might not reach your dream roles. That we spoke a little bit about you know, the decisions we make and what steps we take. But I'm sure all of us will be able to get to our golden destination. Uh, uh, sir, just one more thing. Uh, for example, as a student, if we uh, look at them, uh, they are in the uh, three years program where they are uh, engaged with doing so many things during their college time. So if they have to really upskill something that would help them to, uh, you know, land up with a job. Uh, that they want, especially in this field. What we are talking about is, you know, becoming a data analyst or, uh, uh, you know, handling a large volume of data. Okay. What is that uh, the student should do in addition to their degree program? So should they focus on uh, specific uh, certifications or should they focus on some specific skill areas which they should work up so that, you know, uh, many a times what we see is today, especially as a city like Mumbai, there are a number of uh, jobs which are available, but most of them are related to marketing or selling. Understood. But if they have to get into this kind of a profile, then what is it they need to do in addition to their graduation? Good question. I think the loaded question. I will say it this way. Each student is different. Each of the students has a different career map, a different goal, different aspirations, different uh, skill sets, I guess. Uh, so for each student, it's important for them, like I mentioned, have a personal development plan. Uh, have a roadmap and it's a not long term. You could have a short term, medium term, long term where you see yourself in 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, end up at a CEO or whatever you want to be. What's your dream ambition? Don't be afraid of putting it there. Then try and work backwards to get to medium term what you need to get to. What you see yourself in the next 10 years? What do you want to be? And three years, what is it that short term you want to get to? If you look at it as you know, what are the profession? What's you're following a dream? Where do you want to land up? Try and put that on paper. Put it in a small kind of uh, or a PowerPoint presentation. I can share a template with the help of Boomer. I can share it to the kids. Then you try to plug in what are the skill sets that will take if you want to get into a business leader, you want to get to a HR seat, a corporate HR head. You want so tell them, get them to kind of put in what is it it takes, what skills that you have today. You talked of sales and marketing for selling. What do I need to do? I'm an introvert. Can I sell? Yes, you can. How? And then they'll tell you that you can leverage these trends. Your ability to communicate and sell through the social media, use Facebook, use connectors, use tags, and define the audience search. You can use that opportunity to leverage your whatever skill strengths you have. So each of these students need to identify and do a personal development plan, identify what is it they need to do, and where to get there. From our side, and I thank Madhu again for this, uh, as part of uh, Industry Next and as part of XLR. Uh, we will support your team in giving a, maybe a, we did a small 45 to one hour program. We will do a 30 hour program we suggested that covers, you know, simple things like people don't use Excel, MS Excel. People don't use even 1% of what it can offer. Advanced Excel will teach you and coach you how to do that better. Uh, we spoke about Tableau. We'll see how we can understand basic Tableau. We'll do that for you. SQL to run the programming will turn that also for you. How does it sound? I understand it's a difficult uh, step for the children to understand that and not all of them would like to enroll for courses that they're not sure of. This will be something that you can we'll try and get it as a low fee or no fee if possible, if that helps. So any anybody who's interested, I'll try and get Madhu uh, with XLR, uh, where he works as a senior consultant, to put in modules that help you at least understand. Because for me sitting here to tell you do this, do that is not fair. It's not logical and it's not right also. I don't know what the uh, children's interests are, what the boys or girls are planning. But this, if it helps, we'll try and get them into the 
big bad world of bi and business analytics does it help definitely yes uh, so what this one uh, one word is another oh sorry sir am i am i audible you are you are yeah very much first of all i think as a head of the institution i should thank you for this wonderful insight that you have given to um, our students and us also so i have been uh, taking for 35 years okay okay i retired as head of it in oh, so terms, but i have been uh, okay it's about 8 years ago 10 years ago okay. the world has changed a lot no okay uh, what we i couldn't see as solutions are available today in the market mm. actually what we want to do is i think uh, a bs space mm. if i got somebody who can help our students yes uh, to build a data warehouse for me on my on our uh, results basically okay it could be results it could be fee collections and things like that okay so we want trying to int- what has happened is that uh, last couple of years uh, we have not been able to we started the projects okay and what happened the children keep on changing so the projects are not taken off i understand yeah. i think if i can have a dedicated person who can guide our students mm. so what it is required i can enter data warehousing i think uh, a design i can give to the students i think in okay. fact that is what i had done years ago now i think last three four years i am not all in touch in what is happening in the But, yeah. you know, those areas mm. this I'm ms def- we want to develop for our addition making i think uh, we want to develop for our college basically mm. area of uh, Results where we fare, how we fare. So, so we know that this subjects we are strong, which we are weak. How the students are faring. Often children coming from various uh, uh, what do you call that uh, uh, area, maybe a different one, like not different startup society. How they are faring? How, how what is their movement when they come into college? How they are faring? I think a lot of analytics we want to do so that we can, as you rightly say, we want to put some uh, action plan based on the. that that we are able to get out of data warehousing is something we are looking for very very carefully if there is somebody who can help our students guide our teachers so what is happening i think i do not know whether you have a we have been trying to have a small software division in our college we have about 200 students who are doing a, a course in our college so you can actually start a software industry with that kind of tech yes. okay so very this small way what we are done is we are trying to give Uh, program in uh, insights to the students we okay. we develop quite a, a number of software ourselves in our college okay for our okay. bi is one area we are not be able to do much because okay. the students i think there have been issues i think we need not go with conventional i think if there are good uh, open source yeah uh, data warehousing this is available today in the market okay with that we can whether we can start some project which we can you are uh, somebody can guide our students so that we are take it to a logical conclusion so it can become very uh, uh, that is something which i think anybody in any college in india would be looking at i don't know whether that kind of things have happened you know we have been very tech uh, tech savvy when i think you look or set up and think that the kind of investment that we are making it has been phenomenal but i think this some area which are not be able to because teachers themselves are not software developers i know they are not so mm-hmm. we are try to i think they have, we are taking a very uh, slightly different approach and we have made the teachers also do some programming we have made them project managers and they have done wonderful job but okay. this one area in business intelligence uh, we are not be able to probably because i have not been hands on for quite some time now, so i am not getting into that at all i am not can i do that that's a different issue altogether i can all that i can give them the specs i can do the requirement study i can do what the cube should look like okay what and our queries okay. we require on that we can be done if you are able to help us with that that will be of great help to us so so i think uh, one of the things we didn't do yesterday we gave you a virtual kind of uh, happy birthday present i think very important now and here is what we offering from uh, uh, from my side with my support teams so we will definitely get this going uh, we will try and get you said the big big words a uh, power bi uh, basic tableau the big words there but we'll try and get them in a kind of longer we did a one hour kind of session we'll do it over a period of a uh, couple of days maybe or spread it across three days we will get them to understand these three and like you said correctly i also done advanced excel in many in many sessions in my life but if i don't go and use it later it kind of is of no use so running a project doing something constructive and making a project that you use that will be a fantastic platform yeah 
Bhuma uh, Madam asked you a question a couple of minutes back about mm. the application of BA for the students when they go into the corporate world. Right. If you really look at today, all the data today there is no report manual report generation that is happening. Okay. Uh, you get all the report pushed onto your mailbox every day mm. from data warehousing or anything that you are. It could be any platform. At the end of the day, all the MS reports come to on your table. It comes in your mailbox. Maybe what people have to do is apply their own analytical mind, get the data that you enter, you reshape it and present it to the manual. That's what is happening. Today, there's no requirement of compilation of data per se. And there are too many hooks available to push the data into any application that you want. I think today, the student who's sitting, I think, uh, let him work anywhere. Unless he doesn't know the basics of analytics, he can't survive in the world. Very, very true. That's happening across. Yeah. I think even research I see struggling with okay, building up data thing that for them to make decisions. So I think this is a very extremely important field. I feel like coming from data mining, data warehousing, maybe we are talking about big data in time to come. So I think this is something which is going to be the in thing in the market. So I think students need to know that. I think the stress has been on that. We have tried to have a couple of workshops on that. But if you can help us to do something on that, I think that will be uh, wonderful for us. Absolutely, we'll do our best. Maybe like I said, uh, spread across a fortnight maybe. Today is two hours per day to get the students to understand the basics and then try and take them into a project which can be monitored. You got a great IT background that is makes sense that can help them understand that. That will be great. Once again, I think my heartfelt thanks. Wonderful presentation. I was very keenly looking at uh, what you presented in uh, Think that data where going down. We are one of the early adopters. A wonderful tool. I always say it's like finding a needle in a haystack. That's what data warehouse. It is. is. Okay. So we are using that. Okay. Let us. Have the student need to appreciate that. And at some stage in life, I stood in front of student to show what data warehouse looks like, so how it is being used. Wonderful. I think to last two days, I think personally, I learned a lot of things from what you have presented. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Likewise, DataPace has been a learning experience for all of us. It's been a win-win for all of us. So thank you so much for uh, your learnings. I hope yesterday was a good birthday to start the session. Tarkash, like I said, it's about building the repertoire. It's like, you know, we spoke about that yesterday. It's about having the bows in arrows in your armory to be able to attack any problem, shoot any uh, shooting and shoot straight. I think that's the focus we need to get. So appreciate your insights. We'll surely try and do something. While I'm not the ultimate authority on tech myself, we'll try and use whatever good offices we have of uh, our team to get this going to the next stage. Thank you so much. Go, Thank madam. You. If you have got anything, you can carry on. Sorry for interruption. Welcome, welcome, welcome. No, no, sir. Actually, in fact, uh, I felt I would ask certain questions so that maybe some students who might be finding it a little difficult to put it across. So I just thought taking to their level, I thought I would ask some questions. There are also few other questions which are there on the Q&A section. I asked the moderator yes. to take over. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Bhumanam. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Madam, sir. Um, so, sir, some suggestions and questions have come from students' end. I'll just put it one by one. It is Nivedan Ram Prasad. He has said that you did share an immense amount of knowledge in such a short time with us, sir. I wholeheartedly express my gratitude to you. But, sir, I have a small query. Could you please explain a little about business acumen? Okay. So, this is, uh, you know, I am a South Indian, but I am a Gujarati by heart. So, business acumen, uh, the state, this country, the state, Gujarat, the business of Business is understanding good business, so they do business well. So business acumen, I think Neva, you must have seen my last slide yesterday uh, on my learnings across 30 years, uh, how you would manage change, you know. So it all begins with making a business case. Uh, I think you spoke about it today, understanding the customer. So what is it that you deliver? It's as required by the customer. What the customer desires, how you're able to anticipate it, how you're able to cater to it, and how you're able to approach the customer, making a pitch, making a sale. It's not in just a sales and marketing kind of scenario. The business acumen, if you're able to leverage your whatever skills in selling. And at every stage in life, friends, we are selling something. The selling, you know, you want a you know, want a plate of food on your table, you want a new 
item for yourself. You want a new mobile phone upgrade. You want a new laptop there. You want to get into you know, learning power BI, for example. You want to make a pitch. Yeah, even I think the way uh, Mr. Raghunathan made a pitch now in sold me the idea of getting the children to take on projects. He sold it to you also. He sold it to me. He asked in a nice, gentle way how we could leverage. And Bua also said, how can we use? How can we? How can we advance the knowledge of? You know the power bi and the uh, and tablu how do we get students this is made a pitch so when you make a pitch like this in the audience that we have i cannot say no so in a way sold the proposition i bought it yeah so in a sense this example of how live selling can happen how you can make a how you can make a business deal how you can clinch a uh, clinch uh, you know a winning proposition so business acumen is all about how you can be a game changer how you can manage to uh, you know, you have various skills and attributes. You can be introvert, extrovert, ambivert, whatever it is. How are you able to harness what is happening around you and build in that? And this comes through. Not, not business is not about just, you know, transactional. It's all, also about transaction analysis. We look at how you are as a person. So how you transact, how you connect with people, how you leverage uh, whatever it is, not selfishly, but to get to the intended outcome. So the inputs that you do to get the intended outcome is exactly what's all about business. So if you're able to do that and deliver good efficiency and good output and have a satisfied customer, that's about having business acumen. So you go around to the shops now and uh, when you do that, typically we Indians are strong at that. What is it we're strong at? They're strong at bargaining. They're strong at negotiating. Yeah, I've been in various countries where they see Indians coming, they close a the shop and run away. So why? You will bargain us and we'll be dead broke. Yeah. So how do you do that? So when you go into a when you go into a shop to buy an item, suppose there is a kind of various price ranges and there is a bargaining power you might have. You don't kind of see that you want that item, right? You say that you know look around and this how much is how much is this, and then don't express express interest in the product. And then the shopkeeper kind of says how much kitne mein and then you kind of start into the discussions of the cost. So there's a value that you need to also ensure that is pegged there. So in all these learnings that you have, it's all about business acumen. So in a sense, not very rocket science. It's about simply how you manage your deals, your relationships, how you ensure you get what you want. Does that help me with them? Yes, sir. thank you. The next question is, how much is too much in research? How much should we delve into the topic for achieving an accurate result? So they say that, you got to be minimalistic in approach. Uh, too much of data can throw you off, as uh, you just said. Uh, you got to have that Pareto principle. Look at the critical contributors to the end outcomes, the desired state. To reach the desired state, what is it that you need to kind of focus on? Uh, and that's what the BI helps us get to the critical few. Uh, it should not end up in an analysis paralysis where uh, you get so much of flooded with data and dashboard doesn't tell you. The end outcome, what you need to seek, and as we look at the dashboards, look at uh, lower level, medium level, top level CEO, you will get limited dashboards. The analytics are limited. So, as you see, the data that goes in can be intense, but you need to be segregating and sorting. And data mining is all about picking out what you need. So, to answer the question once again, uh, don't get into too many stuff at one time. Focus, prioritize. Uh, there's a Stephen Covey that looks at the seven habits of effective people. Try and look at the critical ones, sharpen the saw, look at what you want to do on the spiritual front, you know, on each of the fronts that is just not about the academic front. Try and leverage each of that and make yourself balanced, but pick up two or three and don't kind of make it a goal for the year that will never happen. A June, January 1st kind of resolution doesn't last so long. Try and make it day focused, make weekly goals on what you want to do. Uh, we spoke about good health, so I also across the last uh, two years, I have got into the best BMI of my life maybe off late in the last lockdown, the first lockdown I'm really into. I try to be fit and reduce my uh, weight and be eating well. So try and take goals that is related to that. Focus on some areas, prioritize. Don't look at everything. Don't try to conquer the earth. Thank you, sir. One more question is about zero code. Is it useful for non-IT students in the future? Oh, yes. I think we went through that session with uh, the course, the course to our days. Yeah, it is useful for all. Like I said, like uh, Sri Rangarathan, I don't have a tech background, but I've implemented, uh, like I said, IT systems, the ERPs across the India and the Middle East, and also across the global Australia. So I, I don't have a tech background. I'm no way a tech guy, 
uh, but I've done that. Why? Because that's what you need. That's the order of the day. So you don't need to zero code as simple as that. You don't need to have any kind of uh, pre-qualification. You can do it. Anyone can do it. Okay. The next question is from a student. Uh, right now I'm doing bachelor's in accounting and finance. And is it compulsory that I should pursue a master to get better job opportunities? Okay, good question. Uh, it's obviously better to get qualified. Uh, again, look at the world that we are in the next couple of years. Is education going to be online? Is it going to be virtual? Uh, look at where you want to get to, which countries you're looking at, what's your next level goals? Like I said, have the personal development plan in front of you. It will also be get to get some good experience. Uh, I think the best people in finance and accounting I know who become CFOs and are CEOs are people who know the business process well who know what industries do, know manufacturing inside out. So that's also important there. If you want to get a couple of years of work experience in the process, that helps you, you know, get your, uh, make your Takash fully uh, loaded to shoot, then do so. So I guess it's situational. Maybe if you do a professional development plan, look at a personal goals, look at what you need to do, it might be good there. Also about uh, the way the pandemic has played out, see what works best with you. And then always in every way, uh, additional qualification uh, does help. So do do a master's definitely. Uh, do it in the place that works. Let it add value. I say it always is good to do an MS, do a, uh, master's. Please go ahead, follow your dream. Yes, sir. Thank you. The other one is uh, one query from a student. Sir, me and some of my friends are thinking about working or getting a job opportunity abroad, maybe in South Korea. We are BMS students and I'm going for HR and they are going for marketing and finance. What things we should develop in ourselves now that will be beneficial for us at the time of job in the future? OK. One is a good country to go to. Uh, Singapore, South Korea, all these are good countries where there is a great opportunity there. So it's a good place looking at. Uh, I guess Boma Govindran also spoke about her knowledge about uh, what happens there, you might address that better, but it's all about skilling. Uh, so I guess I don't have a, a, a perfect answer to this, but what is it that it takes and what is it that you need to get is something that you need to figure out. So in a sense in life, always do a gap assessment, uh, understand, like I said, was a SWOT I mentioned, try and do a SWOT on you know, what you intend to do in uh, South Korea and what is it that will get you there. So a SWOT will help you do a gap assessment and try and bridge the gaps by actions that you might take. Does that help? Yes, sure, sure, sure. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir, for sharing your valuable time with us and giving us the guidance on business intelligence and decision making with us. And I would like to thank everyone for being so interactive and attentive during the session. Feedback forms will be circulated in the WhatsApp group. Kindly fill it immediately. Thank you, sir, and everyone present in the meeting. Hello, ma'am. Uh, yes, Isha. We'll be winding up with this session now. And uh, the next session will be uh, starting at uh, 3 o'clock instead of uh, 2 p.m. because the resource person has an emergency meeting. So we'll have to start from 3 o'clock. Hello, ma'am. But at the office. Yes, Isha. Ma'am, uh, can all teachers switch on their camera and stop the screen sharing? Yes. Take a snap. Let me event end. Karduna. Camera on. One photograph and then we'll end. Yeah. Okay.
सर स्क्रीन शेयरिंग ऑफ कीजिए ना हाँ एक मिनट है done ma'am thank you sir thank you ma'am thank you shan thank you folks thank you buma thank you for all your time appreciate all insights i'll share my contact once again in the uh, chat you can feel free to reach out for any help that we can and we'll try and take uh, the dream we have of getting you all upskilled immediately yeah madam event end kar raha hu okay sir we'll be joining back at 3 Okay ma'am thank you thank you sir thank you ma'am much